Rebels Up Time. I'm Jazza and I'm the narrator of this season. And this is going to be the last chapter of season one that I'll be narrating. It's been an honour, my friends. I uh, I hope you live. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. I'm Rob and I am playing Brick, a large Phelan Cool bodyguard for one of our other player characters. I have to protect him, uh, but, you know, also struggling with a bit of internal conflict because I don't really want to be a slave anymore. I am Jen, and I am playing Catalina. I am a beautiful Phoenician woman who has come to terms with her magical abilities of reading emotions of others and getting to know her fellow companions. Um, she has just found out that her father is still alive and she still hates her mother. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Dave, and I'm playing Delvin. And Delvin is a man who will pay any price to see his friends through to the end of their mission and save Medela, that sweet little girl. All right, and on that note, we have a few really, really exciting things to share with you before we jump into it. The first one is the tradition of unveiling the with the season finale, the season poster, which will be available on probably something like the link will be on the screen. It's tabletoptime.com slash ironspire poster or something yeah. probably. So check out the link in the descriptions of the podcast or YouTube. Ironspire hyphen probably. No. Uh, all right. You ready? This is it. Oh, that's my exciting. You ready? Oh! Hey, look at that. Dig it a dog. It's really gorgeous. Uh, Round of applause for Alicia Yay, for the season's you, thumbnails, all of the thumbnails, and this poster that she's worked really hard it on for like a few a weeks now. It does, and I, it's exactly the vibe that I think every season should feel like when we get these posters. The reboot one was awesome. This one is also incredibly awesome, and it, I think it really captures the... Uh... Did Ainsley always have a little puppy? <laughs> He has a little puppy. <laughs> you haven't met the little puppy yet. <laughs> this is my puppy. Yeah, that's a new addition. <laughs> and I am going to stroke its head too, He's got a puppy. too far. He's got a puppy. Yeah. You'll meet the puppy. <laughs> Can we get a close-up of bacon This eggs? was also, yeah. Oh, by the way, spoilers. <gasps> Freaking, yeah, spoilers. Uh, she did make sure to paint them as bacon and eggs. <laughs> yeah, they have. They're actually. Oh. <laughs> so we got streaky bacon on the yeah. left. Yeah. Oh. And runny eggs on the right. And we got Mikey pointing off to the horizon. Amazing. Yeah, this is such a gorgeous poster. So uh, I should say that anyone who gets the poster, which will be hand signed by us for a limited time, if you get it from our website or you can get it from our Teespring store on other stuff, like a big poster or tapestry or whatever, um, it will all be going to help fund sort of the recaps and and the launch of the next season, which will be Reboot Season 2. So if there was ever a time to support an endeavour and help us launch off with a bang into the next season, this is it. And this is how. And this isn't the only way how. Oh, I'm very excited about all this stuff. This stuff is very, very fun. So that was our, that's the poster. Please go check it out. Link's in the description or it will be. This is our... Uh, this is the first of our two limited edition <gasps> merch pieces. Ooh. This is the Sparrow... Drawn in blood. So you can get this on a shirt or a hoodie or a mug and uh, you can join the revolution. Uh, and that's not the only, that's the more subtle, tasteful, bloody sparrow. <laughs> but we also have the, the sparrow mask with blood and the text follow the sparrow. Very cool stuff. And it's just a really fun way to, uh, to let the re revolution grow within you to free the people of I inspire. Yay. Join the cause. Murder some people. Make a finger nest. All that good yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I like my shirt. It's very cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. I feel honored. You're gonna you feel should. pretty cool walking I around with honored. a wall follow the sparrow shirt, dude. Yeah. It's pretty it's, it's so cool. It's very exciting. Oh my god. Oh my god. I have to take a deep breath. This is uh it's happening. All right. It's been really cool watching Alicia make that poster. Mm. Very Slowly. Yeah, well, it's the result is incredible. Yeah. Really speaks for itself. So and I can't wait to have this big and in this room. Mm. And I just oh, honestly, it I love that just like the reboot poster, this poster really feels like it captures the whole season. It's got most notable characters that you sort of get to know in any meaningful way and uh, I like that I'm on there twice. <laughs> <laughs> I did so make that cool. joke when I saw it a few weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. 
So without too much further ado, there is one last thing uh, that I want to put out there to everyone watching this, and that is that the next episode, while it won't be a, a chapter in the narrative, we do have, uh, as part of our wrap-up tradition, a Q&A, and we'll be taking questions from our patrons. Our patrons have made all of this possible. Uh, this this channel would not be sustainable or supportable. Alicia's incredible artwork is pretty much directly funded by our patrons. So it's such a huge help. We get to do all this cool stuff and we get to do more. So we really appreciate it. And that's one of the ways that at the end of the season we can uh, interact with you guys directly and get some questions and fill some holes for your hearts. Mm -hmm. But also uh, we, we have a Q&A every week. Uh, so if you want to, especially as we start into reboot season two, it's just worth keeping that in mind because your patronage not only uh, mm. supports us, but you get to join us after every weekly stream, ask us a question directly, uh, and we get to hang out with you guys for half an hour every week. It's really, really fun. It's uh, it's one of my highlights for the week. So yeah. With that said, uh, I think I think that's I think that means it's time to start, you guys. Shh, shit. <laughs> It's good knowing you. Yeah. Why are you all so enthusiastic it's about It's fine. It? I have... You heard my plan just before Jazza walked in. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm, I'm making that. Okay. It's happening. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to get to it. We pick up where we left off. Um, Catalina has been left to reunite with her father. Um, and I'm just going to let that play out off camera, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, you can... And it might be a very silent catch-up or it might be a very talkative one but in the end he will be staying overnight in the um emissary in the you know that building the hold or whatever yeah. Again. yeah sure um but yeah take me through take me through your sort of feelings and thoughts as you go through that how do you imagine that catch-up goes i think that um because catalina hasn't seen him for such a long time um she would feel really vulnerable also how she left things with her mum as well she's yeah. probably feeling quite conflicted so for her, she doesn't want to bring up any of that sort of stuff. She just is so happy in this moment right now. And she's been through so much. She doesn't want it to mm. shatter into pieces. So she's just going to ask how he is and just yeah. catch up, have really fond memories and just make a really sweet moment last. And you know what? He's in exactly the same place. He doesn't He doesn't, He doesn't. want to go over the last five years. Yeah. <laughs> he's, just, yeah. he's actually there in front of you. And you. it's like this moment in time where you were both actually, it's like, it's like you, you never lo lost him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You really have gone back in time and you're sort of like reminiscing and, and your hearts are feeling full as you're reminded with how much you care for each other. But uh, that sentimental and beautiful scene is being left uh, in the glimmering windows as Delvin is guided by Russell walking off towards the military district of Geldervale. <coughs> so uh, what's your plan with this lot? Well, it kind of depends on what your capabilities are. Well, your timing is fortunate. Um, I was, like I mentioned, able to hold off the, the hanging, assuming that that would be too much of a cue for this Ainsley fellow. But do you... What, what bartering do you hope to make with watches? What do you know about the watch? I say in hushed tones. <laughs> well, what anyone knows, uh, immediate execution is as good an honour as any watcher deserves. Mm. It's perhaps more <coughs> complicated than you might think, Russell. Like a lot of things you've believed recently. His pace slows. What are you saying, exactly? Well, <coughs> tell me. What do you believe about a Phelan call from the perspective of a Graydon guard before you met Brick? A Phelan call. Brutal machines of murder. Enemies of the kingdom. And since meeting Brick. Well, is Brick. So, just like any country... The watch is not as black and white as it's presented. It is a society. It is a country without borders, in a way. A small one, but it doesn't have a king. I'm... He's... You're getting mm. your point across. I'm going to make a destiny yep. roll for this one. 
12. Okay. He looks jarred because I think he's getting what you're insinuating and that you know a lot. Mm. You're making an argument here. And his teeth are gritted. Like his jaw is tight. But two or three nights ago, he saw his yep. capital in flame from the king. So he's holding his breath. They, what I mean to say is that they traditionally should have a code. It's not so much that they're a kill, ruthless murder, backstab at every corner. They have a way of behaving with each other. <coughs> Bless you. It means they're not beyond reason and they're not beyond negotiation. They're not all psychopathic cutthroats. Some of them just want to make money. Some of them just want to have fun. So I'm thinking, they're all going to hang tomorrow. His eyes haven't broken from you in the last while. And he says to you, How closely have you had to deal with the watch to know so much? Well, Ainsley's one. That's pretty close, I'd say. Very well. Well, he, he picks up his pace again. <coughs> What's your... What's your plan, then? I wish to offer them... Call it a... bit of gallows redemption. If there are some among their number who are willing to turn their blades upon Ainsley and... help us to save Medela, then I'd like to give them an opportunity, even if that opportunity is based on falsehood he's silent as you continue walking through the night and he sort of says I don't claim to understand your dealings if there's anything I've learned in the last week it's that I simply cannot I at least know that you are good of heart and it scares me to think that that's all I have as a guide the moment because my logic is not matching all these things that are happening a lifetime of lessons propaganda I guess you could call it well you're by now realizing that <coughs> the laws you protected are only relevant to the poor or to the people who don't know how to bend them. I mean, hey, as much as I know you don't want to confront the reality, the reason you're in your position today is because an Iron God was killed. That man was a slaver by accounts that I heard. Horrible sort. Just I had heard distant tales. So, just as a guard, doesn't make one a just man, nor does a watcher necessarily make one damned beyond all redemption. Some just end up in the wrong place at the wrong time. He, he just stops after, you know, you've finished talking and you're approaching this sort of dark jailhouse. He says to you in the night, Delvin... I certainly hope you're not leading me into places I will regret going. Morally, I... I need to know. Can I trust you? Russell. You can trust me to always have the intentions of those who are oppressed and hurt <coughs> and downtrodden. Their best interests at heart. But if you want to know if you can trust me to always make a good decision, a kind decision, be gentle, I can't. Because sometimes you've got to get your hands dirty to make change. And there's no way that people like Brick will ever be accepted, that people like the Barrowans will ever be free, people like Medela will stop being used like a political tool. If we don't make a change, 
and that sometimes means getting your hands dirty. He's but considering a lot as you're talking. <clears throat> I tell you what, Russell, if you stick with us on this path and we make it through the night, you, I think, might be the purest of the lot of us, in a way. So I offer you, you be the compass. You tell us where the line is. Because gods, sometimes I think I need someone to set me straight. He's taken aback by the last thing you said. I've heard captains and sergeants speak with conviction about the need to get dirty to make change possible. I've heard that speech before. It is different when it's on behalf of the lowly, of course, but I haven't heard any of them humble themselves in that way. I admire that. Very well. I will follow you on this path, and I will speak up, if need be, if I see the lines crossed, as best as I can judge. Not that any man should be a judge of it. I appreciate that. And, well, remember you can leave at any time. There's no path you can't turn back from. And then I gesture my head towards the, um, the watchers, like the, the jailhouse, and I say, even that one. I have no problem walking away from a path when it's the wrong one. I've done it before. Follow me. And he walks ahead and leads you inside. It's a bustling building on the other side of the building. This is the back corner of a dark alley as you walk through and you hear the clinks and echoes in the cells <clears throat> as he eventually walks you through in a large rear confinement cell. Everyone's just sort of been lumped into one. Mm -hmm. big stone room with some iron bars and you hear their chattering and um, some laughing and some are like, oh, get it off you, shut up you blast, you have no idea what we're in for now. Oh, well, we're in for the gallows, so you might as well laugh about it. And, you know, you sort of hear this sort of chit-chatting as you walk up and he nods, he says, all known, there for you to uh, chat to and he sort of stands back I will have to supervise. <clears throat> I'll watch for the. Is there a chair around? I'm going to say, yeah, there's a little wooden stool. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, Even in front of Russell, I, Delvin puts on his mask. Ooh. I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to have to Destiny roll this one. Okay, 13. Maybe he doesn't. I mean, it's not like he's seen this. He. He double takes, but he tu he turns away. At this point, he's decided he's opted in for the the grey, as it were. Yeah, <laughs> and he's looked the other direction. Okay. He certainly looks like he's doubting everything he's ever known. Yeah. but he's what standing watch for you. So, <coughs> Delvin puts on the mask, mm -hmm. grabs the wooden chair, very calmly, just walks down the corridor, dragging the stool behind. Like so, it's deliberately making a bit of the. Not like super loudly, but the sound of wood dragging across a stone floor. <laughs> I shout, you're a good one for it, aren't you? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> what happened there? He gurgled an alien. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, shut up, Peter. Uh, you're in for it as much as I am. And they're sort of like jostling mm -hmm. each other. Oi, oi, shh. Someone out there. Drags the chair to maybe three foot in front of the cell, the stool, and just sits down. Hey, go it. We have a fist pin. <laughs> Frilly mask and all. This is a new guard uniform. Reaches into a secluded place and they pull out a gold token. And they just start flicking it in my thumb, making the sound of a coin, like flicking, catching it, flicking it, catching it. They do start to quieten. And one of them, who seems to be the leader, steps forward and says, uh, All right, uh, you with Ainsley then? You need to get out of it. No. Well, keep flicking the coin. Well, what's the show for then? I'm deciding something. Deciding what? Out with it. We're in for the gallows. You can't waste our fucking time. 
If that's how you want to be. I'm deciding how many of you are worth saving. Where watchers? Says one of them in the back. It's a fucking nun. Well, one worthy of being owned. I scan slowly, just look across the lot of them. You, um... Do I see any worthy of being owned? In response to that, they're a little sheepish and you get the impression that these aren't token holders. Oh, yeah. I assume <laughs> they're not token holders. And they're sort of like looking at each other like... And then the, the one on the front has got an earring and an eye patch. He sort of says, uh... Hey, you can put on these theatrics all you want, but... You're as doomed as any of us if I start shouting, Watcher, watcher's ear. There's a new one you haven't caught yet. You're one of them city ones. <laughs> I feel like I'd wager you haven't even been to the Watchwood in your life. No, I can't say I fancy the trees, but you mean... You couldn't handle the fucking trees. <laughs> hmm. The rest of you. Cut from a different cloth, you lot. They give you those tights? You steal those? Or do you have to earn them? First one to kill him lives. Oh, I'm going to roll destiny for this. Oh, I'm going to re-roll that. Boom. 17. There, there are a couple of white eyes all of a sudden. And he, he doesn't flinch. He just sort of stands there as if like, oh, yeah, sure. As if that's going to happen. <laughs> and a person behind the person behind him sort of shuffles. And as you're sort of distracting or making conversation there is an immediate kerfuffle and they sort of like jump over each other and one of them really quickly slits his throat. With a shank or something. Yeah. He's cool. held it. Must have been working on it. Something <laughs> he picked from the corner of the cell. Cool. And everyone, everyone's starting to pile on. It's like, what are you doing, you fucking... Shh. He stands up. He says, you got your token. You got more than just yours. That's, I, I pull out another. <laughs> and slide it back in. And you, you say you ain't working for him today, eh? No. He looks a little manic. Yep. He's like a little wild, wild-eyed. And he's like licks his teeth. What's and he turns name? around and says, I think this one's worth listening to. We ain't got any, any fucking shot. No, what else we do? He looks at you and says, I'm, uh, I'm Peter. Peter. I appreciate your willingness to have a reasonable conversation. And I made a promise. Here's the deal. Ainsley is no longer operating under the code of the Watchwood. Ainsley thinks that he is above the Watchwood. Ainsley thinks that he can take all the wealth that belongs to the Watchwood all the way to the lands of the Phelan. A woman in the corner sort of speaks up and says... Oh, well, that's a, a pretty open secret at this point. But the man's so freaking powerful, no one can do anything about it. Can't they? Oh, well, what do you intend? He's got more tokens than you have silver pennies. Tomorrow night, Ainsley will be dead. <laughs> Are you serious? Says one of them. Shortly, hear him out. And those who wish to survive the morning will help me do it. Consider this proving you're worthy of being owned by someone who still knows how the Watcher's Code works. Those he, who... Oh, so man at the front turns around and says, who, who here has their token directly held by Ainsley or Ainsley's own that you know of, eh? And slowly, like, everyone mm -hmm. raises their hand. Turns around and says, all right, if you really can do what you say you can do, it's better bargain than we have if you walk away. So, what about our tokens? Can we get them back? It is my feeling that you have been held by the watch 
in a disingenuous fashion by Ainsley. This will be your trial. And on completion of it, and you're proving your willingness to act against those who stand against all the Watch has spent centuries cultivating, the one who... What's the, the word? MVP. <laughs> Basically the MVP. The yeah. one who shows themselves to be the most mm. competent. But there's a word for it. Mm. Gosh darn it. The one... Proficient. The one who distinguishes themselves the most tomorrow night will earn their token back. And the rest will be elevated above their current station and will be given tasks related to the oversight of Ainsley's current operation. This means more wealth, more power, better beds, and a chance to earn your token back in the future. A few of them look like they're considering it very seriously, or and some look already convinced, but the... Um, Peter at the front says, well, that, that implies you can get us out of here if you want us somewhere tomorrow night. Prove that and uh, maybe we'll have an accord. I um, stand quietly and walk back up the corridor towards Russell. Mm -hmm. Turn around. I'm assuming he, does he have the keys he, and everything? Yep. I say, Russell, they would like me to show that I could theoretically get them out. Would you prefer I take your keys or would you mind accompanying me to say hello to the little watchers? He looks like he will have overheard all of this and he's like, I'm already an out of my depth. You tell me what will uh, be the most useful. Come with me. And act impressive. Huh. I've met a few people who think that of themselves. It's an easy game of pretend. <clears throat> oh. Sort of like straightens up. But it looks like as he's doing that, he's shedding a lot of shock. He's yeah. like, oh, this is, this is more than I bargained at the end. <laughs> but he sort of like straightens up and cracks his neck mm -hmm. and <clears throat> nods when he's ready. What follows you back in. Cool. And we just stride confidently up to the bar, like up to the gate. Yeah. I say, greetings, watchers. This is my iron guard. Oh, this is them then, is it? They don't look very useful. That remains to be seen. If they can prove themselves worthy, they might just be worth keeping alive. But of course, if you don't think so, we can leave. There are other agents I can call upon. Hmm. Well... You've met enough of this sort of type to uh, to know how to put even the odd-looking ones to use. He looks at them. He nonchalantly pulls out keys and sort of stomps forward. Do they give any reactions to this? They're all just watching stunned. Like, mm. they <laughs> would, like, maybe there were rumours that there might be corrupt guards in the city or whatever. Like, they had to figure out how to get in there somehow and... Ainsley probably said he'd have it all handled, but this is this has not gone according to plan. But this is going according to your plan, and it seems like you have a plan. Mm -hmm. He just opens the gate, slides it open, and looks at you and says, Now. Nothing, apparently. <laughs> Watch us. If you choose to side with me, we shall conduct a little plan. Okay. I want you to roll a persuasion check. Okay. I can do that. Yay. So. Roll high. Five successes Yay. on six yeah. dice. Cool. Pretty very, good. very good. So. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to roll. This could be very important. <laughs> Five and then. Okay, so I'm rolling for them. Mm-hmm. All right, this is their perception checks. I'm going to roll five, and then I'm going to roll three checks. All right. Okay. Three. Convinced. Convinced. Four. Convinced. Convinced. So, is it a re-roll on draws, isn't it? No, I got five successes. Oh, okay. One, two, three, five. four, five. So that's, that's one, a, one who looks skeptical. That's a re-roll. That's a re we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the re-roll. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll come back to the re-roll. So that's one out of five. There's two more to go. Four. I beat that. And can beat. So one to re-roll. So one's a re-roll. Okay. And then we have two more. Wait, no. Three more. Eight, yeah. Yeah. Are these ones better? Ooh, the better ones. Convinced! Ah, better one is convinced. (laughs) Yes! Convinced! Last that one. one was gullible. He failed every roll. Yes! So. Yes! <laughs> okay. And one's a re-roll. Okay, no. I, we'll get, I'm actually going to take that we'll one. just let him be a loss. And okay. one of them standing skittishly at the side, really wiry looking, mm. just when you're like maintaining eye contact with the others, bolts for it. I think he's going to he's, he's gonna get out of it. Like he's like, now's my moment. Like that's it. And he's he just goes to floor it. So... Uh, <laughs> I've got his stat sheet. Uh, he will have to charge past Russell. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And me. Uh, and you. Well, you're yeah, you're sort of in front. So if you want to leave him to Russell or if you want to nope, help take I wanna him. I want to strike him. Okay. Just knives. So he's bolted. Uh, he has one reflex. You have one reflex? Yep. Okay. So it's a roll off. Oh, he he wins. Wiry yep. little slippery bastard. So I declare first. Yep. I'm going to brace. Okay. He sees you bracing and goes to run straight past you. So is he going full defensive? So no, he's just running. Okay. He's trying to get out. He's trying to slip cool. through everyone's fingers and just get out the door. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Russell can declare last. <laughs> uh, wait, no. He should have declared earlier. Yeah. He would have just gone to apprehend him. Mm-hmm. Like he would have Apple. seen it at least. So uh, then it'll be, I'm going to say, ooh, a defensive roll against a yeah, so standard combat roll. Yeah, he two dice. Yep. On his combat roll. Okay. Although so he's probably unarmed. I'll do so. his roll first. He is certainly unarmed. All Three. right. Let's see if Dalvin can get spicy. Two. And is <laughs> minus one. Next one, two, three, six minus one. So this is our little wiry fella. One, two. This is combat roll. Russell is fully armed and. Oh, yeah. You know, you can go. You I go have high reflexes. You go for it first. So. Yeah. Wolf. Oh, I rolled really Whoa. badly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Two. Oh, jeez. So I'm going to say that because we get tied, that that like Delvin draws his blades and okay. tries to get, he tries to get in the way, but he was kind of positioned off the wrong way. I was getting ready to catch him and I didn't expect him to dart. So like yep. he ducks out of the way and just meh. All right. So Russell's got his medium weapon. He's got, a, he's got his sword drawn. Uh, and his roll was two, right? Okay. Yeah. One, two, Russell. three, four, five. So immediately just swings, and that was three victory points, is that right? Level three victory, yeah. Level three victory, which can trip if I'm correct. Yeah. Yep. Boom. So <laughs> Wari fella, he's running along and just Oof. sword to the to the shin. And oh. he just he floors it and like face hits the Yuck. cobblestone cell. Next round, he's going to still try and scurry away. This is his moment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Decl- well, you declare first. I'm Ru- going to, I'm Russell just attacking him. him. Russell declares first. He's So no special declaration. I'm just rolling an attack roll and then I'll decide based on if yeah, I get okay. successes. Russell's the same. Okay. But this guy has, uh, well, what, what's the? A negative four for yeah, being prone. That's it. Okay. So what was it before? It was like, okay, so he's got like one. Yes. <laughs> Boom. Oh, okay. I'm just going to, yeah, I'll give it. Yeah, I'm four successes. It. I'm just going to let you take it. Russell's tripped him and you can do what you want. Okay. He's squirming and he's starting to increase his volume because he's trying to just I, get Delvin out. just steps on his middle back, pulls his fringe up by the neck and just <laughs> slits his throat onto the ground. Oof. Which obviously is not going to make Russell very happy with that. No, Russell watches, like, and he clenches his teeth, jaw, but he looks at, he just, he looks away. Um, I, in a quiet voice, says, um, down on the gallows, 
dead on the floor. Still dead. I thought the same thing. Um, and then just holding his head up while he's like ble- bleeding out, I t- like flip him over and face his head towards the group of people in in the um, in the cells. And then I say, and that is the fate of a coward. And then I just drop him onto the ground. Seems like we have an accord. He holds out his hand. <laughs> it's like you've got uh, seven watches at your disposal. What, I, uh, what's the plan? I say, <clears throat> so I need you all to understand something. By striking this accord, you are betraying Ainsley. You are dead on the gallows in the morning. You are choosing a chance at life. But know this, and you should know this, for dealing with Ainsley for as long as you may have. This betrayal alone is your life. There is no double cross because Ainsley would kill you either way. If you attempt to turn back on this deal because the nerves get to you, I assure you his Phelan call will have you on the ground bleeding out before you can think twice about your decision. So understand that I doubt all of you will survive tomorrow night, but those who do will survive glorious and rich. The plan is, Ainsley knows by now probably that you were captured, but he doesn't know that you escaped. Conveniently, and I walk up to the first guy that was killed, and I get my knife and stick it directly into, like, under his diaphragm, into his torso, and just slit his gut wide open, and then shove my hand in, (laughs) and just, like, root around in his, in his, like, innards, and just, like, wrench basically whatever I grab out. It's disgusting. (laughs) It's brutal. Yeah, a couple of them are like... uh, And then I say conveniently and flick my uh, hand Ainsley's good man was smart enough to swallow a key good thing you were smart enough to take it out of his stomach and escape so at least that's what the guard will have to worry about tomorrow couple and like nodding like alright I see what you're doing so <clears throat> the plan is you will spend the day laying low, as low as you can. And I know you can lay low your watches. And in a kerfuffle tomorrow evening after dinner, you will arrive with one of you with a bag of your head, presenting themselves as the Thanissian man you were escorting. Because of course you escaped the guard, you recaptured your prey and you're returning to Ainsley triumphant. In this moment, me and my compatriots will be engaged in a little verbal spa with our friend Ainsley in a deal. What he doesn't know is that all of his pawns and all of his little pegs and his games have all been undone without his knowing. And is at that occasion, through the careful application of, well, you would have heard of magic. A couple of them like eyes go wide. <clears throat> we will turn the tides with your help. It will be a sudden betrayal, coup d'etat, Ainsley will be killed and we'll have the riches. It's a bloody plan and there's a lot that could go wrong, but it is better. And I look at the ball and look at the floor, then the gallows. So what's the end game? Kill Ainsley? Take over his operation. All right. That all sounds well and good, but uh, how do you suppose in the middle of Geldervale, a batch of seven captured watchers with word among the guard of this recent catch are going to spend a full day before somehow appearing in Ainsley's noble quarters without being apprehended. What was your what was your plan to get in there in the first place? We're gonna be met at the city wall and brought in with a well, one of Ainsley's men, but um well, we were we were caught before any of that happened. Hmm. We'd either get into Ainsley directly or get out to the city wall for that to happen, to be picked up. But he'll hear. He, he might have even heard, who knows, about nine watchers being caught. He's very connected to the guard. He'll know. 
and he'll applaud your resourcefulness for escaping. <sighs> Surely there is a place you can lay low. This is your city, is it not? Russell sort of leans in. I can arrange something. If the tenants for a day can hold their tongues and be respectful. He like looks at them like, are you going to be good boys? Mm. <laughs> like, but he's like, you know, I can, I can guarantee your safety in transport if you all step in line. Do they look like they will? Yeah, he, you actually mm. see Russell put on his commanding persona and it's pretty impressive. It's very convincing. He can do it. So they all sort of like, oh, yeah, okay. All right. uh, um, <laughs> this think. is the most important mission of your lives. It will make or break you and at the end, the riches, the glory. And don't worry, I have contingencies. So, tomorrow night, past tea, one of you disguised as the Thanissian man, and the rest triumphantly with difficulty scuffles. Some of you died, it was awful. Arrive at Ainsley's moment of triumph, and you will be, you will be that drop of sour in his suite. You notice um, one, among them, uh, one among them looks kind of half Thanissian, has quite tan skin, and looks mm. really quite scrawny and could pass with a bag over his head as, mm. uh, as an older Thanissian. It's got long, like, sort of frizzy black hair. Do you have weapons? Who? Us? Mm. <laughs> well, aside from this one I fashioned a moment ago, not really. I can make them from whatever we seem to have around, but if you can get us some, they'll I be have, more useful. I have four long swords at my disposal. They will be, they're, um, <clears throat> they're grey guard weapons, so you need to keep them discreet, wrapped in cloth perhaps until you reach Ainsley's, but when there, you can wear them proudly on your hip. But as this conversation is wrapping up, several of them are like, you know, like, all right, new boss. <laughs> you know, like, okay, I can do this. I was going to die yesterday. Yeah. And Peter's eyeing you up and down like, all right, we can hold our tongues and step in line if uh, you hold your end of the, uh, end, end of the bargain. We'll hold ours. I, he's at the front, yeah? Hmm. I lean in a bit closer and quietly, softly say, in a way to try to butter. He's clearly got an ego. Yeah, he's a little jittery. He's like watching yeah. you. Like, and I say... Something tells me you might be the most distinguished one of the lot. Yeah, I think you'll find I am. I, I flick the token one more time and catch it, and then I go... He looks at it greedily. It's that close. And I discreet them, take two steps back, and then say to Russell, Well, I'll take it from here. Good. Evening. Good evening. And I slink out. And as you walk away, you hear him in the distance sort of say commandingly but quietly, if I hear a single word out of any one of you, you'll be gagged and bunked. Oh, he's sort of like, you know, putting them in their place and starts to line them up and chain them to each other. And into the night. I think we'll let that go. Holy shit, that couldn't have gone better, basically. <laughs> yeah. That was so lucky. Well played. Oh. And well earned. Take a destiny point. In fact, everyone can take a destiny point except for you, Brick. <laughs> Seven watches of varying skill. Okay. Now, speaking of Brick, uh, I think this is the time to sort of fast track into the morning, but I think uh, you will have had a very uneventful evening. Um, I have two things I need to do before bed. This is so lovely. Okay. Very relaxing. <laughs> you probably, I imagine, would spend most of the evening in a private room, like in your quarters and... Let's do whatever. Uh, you said you want to do something before bed? Uh, just some magic rolls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, and it involves cat as well. Are you coming back to the inn? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. If me well, let's just say, yeah. you know, time passes. We're in the, in the inn in the evening. Because of the, um, of the races, there's not many rooms available, but you all get one yep. um, that you're going to have to share with share, each other. Yeah, and they right. improvise bringing an extra bed in um, and... I brick up and down 
and sort of say, oh, we don't have one in his size. So. Uh, it's all right, we can spoon. <laughs> mm. Takes all sorts. He <laughs> walks out. <laughs> Kat, was that enlightening for you? Uh, I think the past few days have been enlightening for me. But I reach out and squeeze Catalina on the shoulder oh. gently. Oh. She puts her hand on yours. I have to apologize in advance for something. I I have secured the life and services of those you would least wish to see alive and serving anyone, those who had your father. We're facing a very dangerous foe. I have to put it aside. I trust you. We can trust them about as far as we can throw them, but I think I'm fairly confident that I've bought their loyalty. And it should, or it could, swing the tides of this situation to our favor. But tomorrow night, when your father arrives to Ainsley's meeting, it won't be him. It's a disguise. So don't be concerned. And all things, I look up at the sky at nothing in particular. If the fates be kind, it will be allies who come, not foes. Cutthroats seeking glory, fame, and riches, freedom of their own sort, but allies nonetheless. But I do have to make my contingency. So, um, would you help me do some magic? Of course. Remember what we saw? The fire. The spark. The light that ignites. Can oh. you create that? Yeah, of course. Do I that? Um, yeah, I'll let it stand for, you know basic manipulation to a, you know, a few amounts or whatever. So, like, if you're... I'm assuming you're wanting to do a few things. I'll just give you your dice back. Oh, because they're little... Um, <clears throat> yeah, do you want to just sort of fill me on the rough plan so I can know how I to am, the dice? I'm getting... Well, it's just the level... I'm assuming it's the level one fire and the level one capture mm -hmm. and then the level one put it in the thing. Yep. The same, exactly the same as we did. Yep. That's the intent. So what's the... The plan? thing is the barrel and mining charge. Okay. So I can, with the level one, release it and detonate the mining charge. Okay. That is the intent. So it have a continuous flame, essentially. Well, it's basically, you'll be creating just a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even just, it doesn't, it can be a candlelight. I'm magically mm -hmm. containing that and then disappearing it into the item so that when I ignite it, it'll be on the, de like, on the part, the fuse that would detonate. When I release the magic, the fire would just go f and immediately okay. ignite it. So, make our charge. So, you, you roll first, challenge level one, and it's just mm -hmm. going to be basically to hold fire in place. Now I'm going to let you do this. You have a few charges. Mm. Um, I'm going to let you make separate rolls to make it separate triggers, mm -hmm. or you can make it one roll and they all trigger. Or, or you can, do the, any amount you do of these rolls, you can sort of differentiate how they're triggered. Um, so if you want it all in one big boom, or it all to happen at once, then you can do that. If you want more control, it will be harder. Okay. Yep. Uh, I think we definitely, I definitely want at least one separate to two because I have three. So we'll do one first and see how we go. I don't think you have three dice. I think you have two. You have, your fire you have magic. two dice, fire magic, but... But I put a point in fire magic. When you put no, a point in a skill. skill. So you have two mana, one skill. Oh, okay. But uh, what you're doing is super simple. So I'm going to say it's challenge level one and you're basically able to sort of, almost like it's floating lava lamp material, create and hold these dense, tiny, hot beads of flame and sort of separate them into a few separate like things. We'll okay. make you roll and see if you want to go into that. Okay. Oh. So it costs you a mana. Dang it. All right. But you and it, so and you're unpracticed at this. This is still new to you. Yep. You effect, you do it effectively, but as you're doing it, you're sort of feeling your capacity being stretched and sort of pushed past and you're yep. sort of losing that energy a little bit, but you're holding it then. So quick metagame question. Yep. So then 
I have separate dice pools for different classes of magic. Okay. Is that correct? Yes. So the skill level yeah, cool. is the level of spell you can attempt yep. or do. Yep. Or do. It's kind of an auto win. Sure. The mana pool is your vocation level. So you can yep. have more points in a vocation level and have more mana, but you can only ever attempt. You can only ever attempt a level one fire. Yep. Okay. Action. Cool. All good. Cool. But you always get two to roll with now you have how one because you, you burned a mana. How do you restore your fire magic? It'll be this, everyone's restoration. It all restores same. all yep. mana the same. Okay. But you roll separately. Yeah. All right. I'm going to attempt to capture it. Okay. So challenge level one for the first one. Uh, good, okay. good. You loot, You burn one mana. You're going to get one dice to roll with for the next one if you want to separate it. Now, I will let you, if you want to reverse engineer it and play it safe, you know, just choose to do all three. But if you want to roll a separate one, you can. Well, you created enough torchlight. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take that offer. I think we take the offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to say that as you, I see you found floundering with your magic, I have a magic sense. This is really difficult for both of you. And <laughs> I realised that that was kind of an intense moment and, and, and I had control. I go, okay, no, I can't guarantee I'm going to be able to do all this at once. So I just grab all three to put in the three yep. things to go together. As you start to do this surgical work, basically, to try and isolate and separate them, just like you sort of, you actually sense, because you know magic, you can sense her losing some of that resource and you're starting to lose it a little bit too. So mm -hmm. you sort of catch yourself and just like, okay, let's go with what we've got. You've caught all three and now you can embed them. Put it yeah. in the thing. That's it. Challenge for one, you get one dice. Boom. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I could see your brain just go. Not boom. Just do it. <laughs> okay. Not boom. Not boom. But no. also I keep so the So you bar. hold it, yeah. So you basically have these three sort of burning hot tiny suns that you trap in these orbs of energy that you put right at... You actually embed them at the point of trigger. So there wouldn't be a fuse to light and wait. Now, you... I'm just going to basically... We'll talk about this in a meta sense, but... We'll have to figure out how that happens in the story. But basically you can feel how to attach that to something. You can you can decide if it's going to react to a trigger word. You can it's sort of it's like invisible strings. You can sort of connect it to uh, even a mental state, um, but or or a, a a release or a, or a time. You like while you have them frozen, you're basically sort of taming them and telling them how to react. I am going to tie it to my just just a it, this is no tree it's going to be a trigger of me consciously real wait so does this mean I still have to spend a mana to activate it right to uh or if I set a trigger is it I think anyone? setting a trigger is gonna be the cost or activating it as a cost. So it's three things to spend. It's the capture, mm -hmm. the embedding, and then the activation. Okay. The activation I'll, can either be done now based I'm, on a I'm trigger just, or you I can... I think I'm going to make it a direct, like, I, 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 act, I set them off. Activate it later. I set them off. Yeah, not so anyone or a trigger word or anything. Okay. I set them off if I want to. Okay. So you basically hold them. They're frozen in time and just sort of dissipate, and they're there. Mm -hmm. And you sort of, from the moment that's done, feel this really distant echo of a connection to something you're almost always peripherally aware of where they are and what state they're in so that you know later at any point you could just go <sighs> release them and they just go <laughs> all right but that will be also a spell oh, yep that's yep. fine okay so the box that the scepter is in mm -hmm. what's that look like I'm going to say it I, – I don't know what I said the last episode. I'm going to say it looks the same. It sort of has to look the same because that's part of the forgery. So okay. it will have been – it will look the same as the, the box that you both transported. Is it sort of like a felt lining situation with Inside, a hammer in yep. it? Okay. Red velvet perfectly fit to the shape of the scepter. I would like to go downstairs – and is it it's late yeah either purchase or steal all the cutlery okay uh let all the cutlery yep 
what'll it be, purchase or steal? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna ask, see. I'm gonna ask to buy at least at least someone like a, a tray's yeah. I, worth. I think of if cutlery. you're not saying all, yeah. <laughs> I think it's doable. Like a tray's worth of cutlery. I can just role play it like, them. yeah, you can spend a bunch of money and they'll okay. give you a lot of cutlery. Cool. They, they're super hesitant because this is like the time of the spy run and it's super busy. But you've offered them quadruple the value of the cutlery, and they know they can go get it tomorrow from a silversmith or whatever. And they're yep. like, okay, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like we've wrapped up for the night. Frame. We'll go out first thing. You're weird, but yeah, sure. Okay. You uh, paid over and above the price for the room, so <laughs> why not? I head to Brick and I say, um, Brick, would you be able to snap these, uh, bend them back and forth and break them all into two? I think that could be accomplished. I'm going to say with your sharpened bardache, and you have like, you know, you're sharpening stone, so you can get it back into the state. You could fairly easily find some sort of block situation and an easy way to basically <laughs> sort of chop them up if that's what you're looking to do. I mean, what's the challenge that would just literally be like? Oh, I mean, I've got to look at the table for that, don't like I? Gri the, grip check? <laughs> um, yeah. But just to do it with your hands, challenge level seven. That's I mean, a strong. I reckon there. I could break a fork. You just no, but like to, to do it in any sort of, like in the thick bits and the like. Okay. To do it in any sort of way with control. Okay, and, and I'll give you. I'll give you a six. Are you talking like to, to look cool? So he's not like <laughs> for like twenty minutes on one four. He sort of has to. <laughs> right, right, we'll use the bar to shave. Okay. <laughs> do, do the smart. I thing. do love the idea of Rick being like. <clears throat> <laughs> just back and forth for like 20 minutes. Okay, chop it up. I'll just let you chop it up. Uh, okay. All right, what are you cooking up here, Mr. Dell? Cool. So I'd like to lift the felt out of the box with the, the thing in it. Okay. And what's underneath? Uh, just padding. I'd like to remove the padding or at least most of the padding. Yeah. I'm going to put two barrow and mining charges in there and then fill the rest of the box with silverware shards. Okay. And... Make a horrifying. I'm gonna get you bomb. to make an infiltration check to do this okay. really effectively. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and I'm gonna make it a challenge level five. Would you like me to assist? <laughs> no. <laughs> Before I roll this, it's gonna be pretty easy to tell if it isn't passing. So I, if five is to succeed, to make it pass, right? To look good as a what hidden, is, did I say challenge level five, okay. which is fine. Um, but I'm just going to say before I roll, so it doesn't seem like I'm backpedaling, yeah. that if I fail, I'm happy to remove material and weaken it yeah, to, yeah. until it looks good. I'm not going to hand this lumpy mess over <laughs> and be like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're, and you're like carefully undoing the stitching, retaining the thread so that you can put, because you'll have a sewing kit and all this stuff yeah. to make your costume. So yeah, you, you <laughs> I know. love that I'm secretly a cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's all right. fucking do it. Ooh, One, that two, is three. six successes. Surgically, you dissect. It's a sight to behold. You dissect this box and it's not, the f it doesn't look like it's the first time Delvin has done this. Um, and, you know, carefully remove padding in exactly the sort of way you using your sharpest knives to sort of make exactly the compartment holes you need. Putting the, and you actually know how to space it all out and put all these silverware pits, some that you sharpen to sort of fit within so that they're not clanking, the weight's not too far off. You very successfully, unless someone knows to look for something mm -hmm. and they have to be really bloody perceptive. And you have to be looks, thinking <laughs> barrel yeah. and shrapnel bomb. Yeah. Um, all right. So there's two bombs in there. Do you understand what I've made? Really? It is a death box. If I trigger this, it'll oh. likely kill every single person in line of sight to it. Oh, so we shouldn't be anywhere. This is what you call a last resort. This is what you call on your knees with a knife to your throat as you get told your last rites, and you just want to say, fuck you, Ainsley, right at the end. But, and then I shake up and down the last charge, I say, I've got one left, and the problem is... <laughs> They're all magically tied together. <laughs> However, these things don't just light with magic. So we can just attach a fuse to this and light it with flint. Great. It will be more effort, but 
Or you could do it in the moment with your talent. Uh-huh. So... Who wants the bomb? Can we can <laughs> we stop throwing the bomb, please? We <laughs> <laughs> say she uh, can't do it in the moment with her talent without a source of flame to use. Okay, yeah. So she'd have to sort of get flame to it to activate it. Cool. Yeah. I assume there's probably going to be some candles in the evening, but Maybe. you still have to. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm just sort of saying the way the fire we'll thing works. It's like a motion. You have to find it and grab it first before you, you can, can use it. Yeah. yeah. Tell you what. What, what, what do we think? I think... Um, I think you're kind of brilliant in a weird way. Well, um, so who's good at throwing stuff? I've got a shit arm. Uh, look, I've had a few games of dart in my day, but... Depends what I need to throw. And I hold up a mining charge. <laughs> if it was not far, I think it could do quite well. Because here's a problem. Well, first of all, you're the one that isn't going to be searched and I hand it to you and offer you to take it. And I say, if I do need to go the nuclear solution, I don't... Nuclear! We've invented fission! <laughs> uh, if I do need to go for the last resort, that'll blow too. So if that happens, make sure to throw it far from you. Cool. I think I can do that. I will give you two that you probably have the feeling like it would be more challenging, but you could, if you want to, hold... Two and set one off, okay. but it would be an extra spell. It would be harder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. awesome. Cool. All right. Right. Well, Delightful. You've any... made a death box. It's well, a beautiful thing. I'm feeling at least comfortable knowing that no matter what happens tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I can kill Ainsley. Even if it means the death of me. Do I... I have this feeling that we should perhaps, you know... You know, because what happened last time we were here? Oh, we're in a different venue. We're yeah. in a discreet... Still. Uh, well, we're talking quietly in our bedroom. We're talking well, relatively quietly well, in our bedroom. Wearing pajamas if and hugging your pillows. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're all sn- we're under a little little fort. Well, yeah. Put the sheets up. Well, yeah. we're having our girl talk. Yeah. Um, hey, excuse mm-hmm. you. Anyone can have this talk. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> it's fine I, to be sensitive. I apologise, I'm sorry. Thank you. Our Thanissians, I know you're very gendered, but... I'm a modern barrel man, and I'm perfectly comfortable in my jammies. I apologise. <laughs> Thank um, you. Our friend time. Friend mm. time, right. Mm. Mm. Sounds even worse. Um, <laughs> shall we go over with... What exactly are we going to do? Well, um, option one is we're going to go in there. <clears throat> Ainsley's going to command Brick to um, do whatever he commands Brick to do, and Brick's going to do it. Then right. we're fucked... And then I kill everyone. Uh, okay. Um, your friends, what? what is their role? Oh, when they arrive, that's when the shit goes down. Right. So, basically, I've asked them to come after dinner <laughs> in the evening. So, likely we'll be there while Ainsley gloats and talks for a bit. When they come in and I give the word, and the word will be violence, they'll pull blades and start fighting. And... That's it. It's going to turn to shit. I'm okay. desperately hoping. And then I, lo- I look at Brick and I go, I'm really hoping that you're ready for this, mate. And if you're feeling what I hope you're feeling inside, it's going to be all up to you. Because if you can share what he's learned with the Phelan Cull, maybe we've got a chance to save those two loaves in there and let them know a taste of freedom. What is it exactly you want me to do? What you can do. Change their emotions. Change their hearts. Hmm. Well, Brick, do you have any suggestions? You, you know I cannot give you information that could lead, lead to harm to my master. He said well. after sitting in the room with and helping build the death box. Well, he didn't help. <laughs> Let me You're cutting up the pieces <laughs> yeah. of something like He didn't know what I was I'm for. not directly just, helping. I'm just cutting silver. I just away. said I just said cut this cutlery in half. He doesn't know what a barrow and death bomb looks like. <laughs> well, perhaps I should rephrase. Um if I were to meet a Faith and Call, um, and I really, really wanted him 
to do something else. Is there a particular emotion that you guys feel strongly or don't feel at all? We are known to feel rage quite strongly. At a specific thing or person? Mostly to whoever we are pointed at. I'm going to help help you here because I think they're really good questions and I, I think it's probably worth having an out-of-game understanding. I think Brick's cultural understanding to that question is the phalancol in the room would have very little care for anyone in that room except for maybe the other phalancol or phalan. So maybe Medela, but definitely each other because you know growing up as a phalan call and being yeah. trained and abused and all this sort of thing, you only know and understand the experience of your fellow phalan call and you only know that you're both equally repressing uh, those same So they've got really strong like kinship to each other. I would say yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Like it's, it's very buried and secret because everything has to be because they're so controlled. But on a deep level, that would be it. Okay. Take whatever brick feels in the moment of his pride in the moment of his understanding and share it as a gift with the other Phelan Cole are you sure that's going to work? no but I have to hope that Brick's shown me that the Phelan Cole more than tools. They've got hearts, however deep they've buried them. And if we can't do anything, at least we can show them that they've got lives worth living and that there are certain people that aren't worth dying for. Okay. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else or should we get some rest before... Big day. Yay. Just if it comes to it, cat, find yourself somewhere safe. Get out of there. I think that for everyone that's here in this room, our priority is Medela. I know. I know. What I'm talking about, if we don't get what we want. Now, I'm pretty confident that this whole situation I can make disappear. And I kind of gesture to that box. Don't be disappeared. Just run. I'll give you a warning. Carolina kind of like punches you, like gently, like not. Sucker punch, like mm. she just like the friendly kind of punch. Yeah? Sucker punches. Don't you go? <laughs> <laughs> don't you go anywhere either? And you too. Don't you go disappearing either? I do not know if you've noticed, but I have a bit of trouble disappearing. <laughs> I am quite big. That's what I love about him. He's so they're finally called so funny. <laughs> you wouldn't think it. Wasted talent getting them all to be guards. We are not all guards. My mistake. <laughs> and you know what, Brick? I hope in the coming weeks you can tell me more about your culture, your people. Because mm. it shouldn't all be what we've heard. And I know you don't like talking much, but you got a lot to share. Unless I'm dead. And on that note, <laughs> should we go to bed? <laughs> Anyone up for some late night cuddles before we... Uh... Carolina sleeps on the floor. You guys can <laughs> take the bed. I, I don't fit in the bed. The bed's yours. Yeah. There's two beds. I think oh, okay. the most comfy one. Mm. Okay. A snuggle in. And a, a more blank reasonably... Restless night passes, but a lot. No, I don't want it to be restless. I specifically want, want it to be <laughs> restful. Um, okay. We have to roll. Uh, don't let it be restless. I need to restore my mana. <laughs> what I'm thinking is, I think I think I can offer a cost here as well, like like I did in the other town. I think if you want to do something during the day tomorrow, 
rolls will proceed as normal. But the meeting is in the afternoon and I'm willing to, and you will have paid more for a bigger room that will fit you all. And, it, you know, during, and it's actually a nice in, you know, nice enough that the children of Mamad, who seem to be reasonably high rollers, uh, you know, would meet in there. Um, so I would be willing to let there be a full restoration if basically it fast tracks unless you want to do something with the Collie Day Trust or with other people you want to meet with, with your father getting to safety, whatever I, it is. Yeah, that is my priority tomorrow afternoon. So I would like to do that. Okay. I, I It's up to you. Uh, he will be safe in that building though. I will say that he will be safe in that building. That's a that's a narrator. <laughs> oh, like, this don't is, worry. This okay. is me breaking a fourth wall for you and saying, okay. "Don't worry, All right. they can't get then to him." In if there. I know that, I'm not going to bother. Okay. That's fine. I just say to him that I'll see you soon, sort of thing. Before yeah. I left. look, I toyed around with a bunch of ideas involving the the telescope. I think it's really cool. I think that given the way things have gone and the way with the mind mm-hmm. thing, everything, I just don't Dude. think there's anything we can achieve. Dude, if, there. if Ainsley's down, then we're taking. Oh, the we're telescope. going to the telescope. Yeah. If we oh, kill yeah. Ainsley. Because I had a thought. It's a little prayer of a thought. But imagine it's if we all survive, how cool it would be to be coordinating the Barrow and, like, underground I railway from the, the telescope. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, what yeah. if we, like, you took it up to the freaking Barrows or something? Anyway. Yeah. We've got to win a battle for Yeah, this. yeah, yeah. <laughs> One step at a time. So is everyone's opting in for that. Let the yes. day spend and we move to the meeting. Yes. The evening is, is very restful. Um, I'll give you that one now because... We're paying the price. We're spending the day. The only thing I will qualify is that, and you'll take your time to rehearse your, yes. your harp and that yeah. will recover Shoot and all that. Shoot and polish um, But Brick does not dream. It's no! It's just worth pointing that out. It's just like I think when you wake, you will probably be aware of something of an ab- absence of an interaction. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Sun is rising. I'm going to say you guys get to sleep in a little bit. Um, Now, I will also say to Catalini, I'm sort of willing to sort of let your harp practice go wherever, uh, but I think you should probably role play it. Yeah, yeah, sure. So when when do you imagine Catalina would do her practice? When did you say sorry? Yeah. Uh, It's a very bustling day outside, so it's not going to be hard to sort of keep reasonably quiet. You know what? This is like for her, she's, this could be her last day. She doesn't know. She doesn't really know what she's walking into. She's never been in this situation before. Yeah. She's just met her dad. She's gone through a lot right now. Yeah. So for her, this is a pretty big day. So she um, is going to take her time, sleep in, make sure she's ready, maybe even do a couple of, like, moves that she learnt with Brick just to kind of really make sure she's ready. Um, and then when she feels comfortable, she'll start to play. Okay. Um, what do you play to? Now... It kind of drifts on her that you know, she, just, she didn't just meet her dad. But then something also crosses her mind, the fact that, like, if we manage to, to do this and we take down Ainsley, like, we're starting something pretty important. And then she kind of crosses her, her mind, the thought of the sparrow and the fact that this could just be revolutionary for everyone. So she kind of plays this tune that's kind of a bit like a war tune like it's a probably very strange to what you guys usually hear from Catalina it's a bit dark um but kind of would really get you going like you're like yeah it's got a really good beat um and she just plays it and just really gets emotional over it I'm gonna say when you take the time to do this and you really get lost in it immersed in it on a deep level you feel the emotion in everything when you play especially, when you feel the energies rejuvenate within your soul, you're connected to the energies of people's hearts all around you, including your own. But in this time in particular, there's something even within the harp itself that feels like it's waking. There's something almost like, perhaps even in being near your father, like there's memories stirring and an emotion within the thing you're playing itself that you're sort of representing as well as your own. It's sort of hard to grasp and it, it's not there when you try and look for it, but it feels like something. Okay. <clears throat> How perceptive are you being while you're playing? To what's around me. Mm. I won't even roll for it, not at all. Okay. 
Why? What do you What do you got on your mind? The end of your playing, when you're done, mm -hmm. Dalvin walks over to you, and wordlessly, hand henceforth, just drops in front of you. The piece of parchment that has just been charcoal drawn, and it just has a sketch of you playing your harp against the window. Done. Ah. Uh. I was going to say, uh, well, maybe Destiny a roll. I think a roll. Okay. I'm going to say it would be an artist check. So reflexes? And intelligence. No, I'd say intelligence based. So right, just well, do an intelligence based yet, check. So base three plus one. Challenge level. Well, it'll be whatever it three. is. Three. So it's skilled. actually good. Uh, <laughs> Which makes it my mum's an artist. potential. Yeah, exactly. My mum's an artist. Yeah, so I've, I've learned the basics. I've watched her, uh, but yeah. I... Yeah. You're not practiced by yeah. any stretch, but it's almost like you're just sort of using little pictures in your head that, you know, your mum sort of used to have lying around the house as an inspiration and, and you were inspired. And it, it looks it looks nice enough to genuinely capture this moment. Th this is beautiful. Thank you. Don't be ashamed of what you do. Thanks. That's all. I walk away. Helena folds it up and puts it in her bag. And that's all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking touching. Mm. Lovely. Did what you it? sign it? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Can you sign it for me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you sign the imaginary I'm picture? Art, I, I appreciate art. I need you to sign it for its authenticity, please. Thank you. I. I would you please? Dalvin sign? smirks and gives it a look. Thanks. Actually, Dalvin just draws a little sparrow in the corner. Okay. Yes, great. Oh, so you, that's how you do it. <laughs> What's on Brick's mind as he as he's been waking this morning? Brick is preparing for a fight. He's stretching and slowly going through some moves without a weapon in the room that he can do without making up like hitting the roof and doing too much crazy shit. Just slowly amping up and getting ready. And if I have time, would, I would like to do a cutter. You certainly have time. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's got the time this point. morning and this day. Uh, I'd say you have a big enough room that you could do one. It's a, it's a lower ceiling, so you'd have to improvise based on that. But that's, you know, improvising based on your surroundings is part of yep. this cutter. Um, so you do it very effectively. Let's make a roll. <clears throat> Not great. Four. Why do you think that is? Nerves. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Take take me take us through Brick. Brick doesn't Brick's not gonna talk about it much, but I think it'd be good for the viewers and, and us to just sort of get a glimpse of where he's at no. emotionally going into this. He internalizes a lot, but he's not clueless to what's going on around him, right? And he knows that everything that's happening is coming to a head with this encounter with Ainsley. And I think there's just a lot of turmoil inside that's maybe leaving him a bit too much on edge to be able to perform to the best that he could as a fighter. Yeah. Just a lot going through his head. I can imagine. <laughs> the day passes and the sun is st starts to get a bit lower in the sky. I'm assuming everyone's sort of... We're, we've taken that rest day. So everyone has now full magic. I'll give you that. You don't need to roll for it. And how many destiny points does everyone have? Two. Two, two, and three. Okay. So we can all take note of that mentally and move forward as... The time is arriving and it's about 20 minutes away from when it was seven days ago that you first walked up to the building where Ainsley lives. <coughs> oh, I'm getting a bit nervous. Well, more nervous. Yeah. Well, whatever happens, we're leaving tonight or not forever changed. It's been an Rob, honor. Stop breaking the chest. It's been an honor getting to know you both. Yeah, I. <laughs> this definitely wasn't what I was expecting when I left on that boat. There's a lot more I've got to ask you, but we'll rain check on that. Sure. You all know the way. You're uh, in one district away, and I'm assuming a fairly quiet walk through town. 
Who mm. is carrying the scepter? That's up to you guys. Mm. Oh, I should also say Eladra sort of sees you oh, yeah, through the day. <laughs> and, and she just sort of, you know, just touches base, doesn't want to intrude and, and notices that you're all stressed and doesn't want to add to anyone's stress. But she does note to you as you're sort of leaving that um, I will... I will wait here. I, I'm afraid I rather stand out in these surroundings. There are not many failing people about after recent events. I've already gotten sus- some suspicion in this building, so I've tried to keep to myself. But I will be here for when you return with Medela. Uh, I kind of like take her to the side a little bit um, and say, if we fail in our mission Please, could you look after my father for me? Just make mm. sure that he's safe. Where will I find him? Uh, you'll find him in town. I give you the location. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. But um, don't fail. She looks at you with sort of an unnerving sternness. You can <laughs> see the king's counsellor, sort of the eyes twinge, and you can see a glimmer of how she actually commands. I kind of shift and go... Just tell him that I'll be there soon. I will. I don't know if it's worth anything, but if all goes to shit, um, I don't know if I've told you, I'm sure I've told you this before, but Ainsley is definitely a watcher. I understand, and I gather your implications. I will see to it that that is known. However... You are all looking rather sad and sorry. You're the most competent group of strange people I've met in my entire life. I've spent some time in the capital, and to have a group of ragtag strange people like you come in and set fire to it and walk out unscathed is nothing I could ever have imagined. If anyone can walk into Ainsley's quarters and walk out alive, it's you. Hold your heads high. Thank you. It's... <laughs> I guess it's just when you finally find something worth protecting, you don't want to lose it. It's hard to keep your head straight. When then you hold on to it tight in every second that follows, and it will see you to where you need to go. We best be off. Let's save that girl. Whatever it takes. That's the spirit, she says. Sort of walks and sort of shuffles back around Mm -hmm. the corner out of sight. So who's holding the scepter? Who wants it? I think we're carrying it between us. It's like a bigger box, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Does it seem reasonable? You'd probably cover it in some, some, you know, cloth a bed sheet or something like it's you'd want to conceal it because it looks pretty ornate and failing mm-hmm. um and failing gold is failing gold <laughs> at the end of the day and there's a lot of people but you know i, I can mm. y- y- it's pretty straightforward to conceal and move where you need to okay okay you're gonna head in you head into the lion's den there you go so you arrive to the tower uh there are some guards outside these are not iron guards or gray guards they are sort of commissioned or employed guards for the building. They're dressed very floofily. They, in their stance, don't look as competent as an iron guard. Um, probably better than the average grey guard, but also it's a fairly, you know, floofy position. <laughs> it's more about how they look and reflect and stand than actually fight. And they look at you. One of them sort of turns to the other and sort of whispers and one looks at you and says, um, you're here for the meeting with Ainsley. That's the one. I'm right on time. Oh, you should he, be pleased about this. He likes punctuality. Well, you, you're right. He leads the way. And you walk up the long, click, clacky stairs and eventually arrive to the large oak doors. Clong, clong, clong. It's a bit of a wait, and eventually a latch unhinges. The door is opened, and someone in a golden mask, you know those theatrical masks, that sort of smiling, hmm. sort of someone dressed in white and some, there's, you know, a little bit of, you know, um, lace and like a very pretty, almost thespian outfit, 
white mask, but they have a cer- they have a sword that looks ceremonial, but it also looks like a sword and a dagger, and they look like they're a guard, but they're a very pretty guard. <coughs> they open the door and let you in. The opening hallway is empty, and you notice a slightly eerie otherness about the building that was not there before. There's not background music. It's not as warm as it was when you were welcomed to your previous meeting with Ainsley. But you eventually are guided through. The dining hall is empty and he's leading you through past the, the windows to the outside to the, um, the room that you last met with him in, the art hall. You notice a couple of these guards, you know, gold masks, white outfits. A couple of them have these feathers and there's a bit of pink here and there. So very, it's very beautiful. Opens the doors and, and lets you in. <coughs> After well, entering, just sort of checking, coming back out and, and lets you in the room. You walk in. Okay. Yep. Unless anyone's got anything to say. We walk in. Okay. As you walk in, he sort of turns his attention. He Okay, I, I'm going to paint a really clear picture for you for, for what you guys are looking at because this is where we're going to spend a lot of the episode. You walk in two large double doors that are opened up and ahead of you is a long hall. Uh, it's the depth is facing away from you. In the centre of the room, there is an ornate table and there are two seats seated in on your side of the room awaiting both of you, assuming the phalanx will not be sitting. <coughs> on the other side of this table is a throne, <laughs> of course, and a large, sweaty, gowned, ringed and embellished Ainsley holding a little white, I'm going to say like the equivalent of a Pomeranian, a little dainty dog who also is wearing gold jewels. <laughs> oh, gosh. On his right, no, on his left, on your right, <laughs> is Harold, who you by now would assume is his sort of right-hand man or ambassador. Opposite the, uh, so facing the, t- so you're on the table, you're facing opposite the table is Ainsley. On the right of your of the table, your right, is a large phalanx cool guard standing with a very large spear. Opposite him is a figure dressed in black, fully clothed in black, tight leg leggings, black mask. And you'll, you notice now in the context of all the other masks in the building, it's the sad theatrical face. Black mask, fully fig- uh, figured out in black. Mm-hmm. And the top of like the outfit is sort of with some, it's, it's weirdly like, I wouldn't say fluffy, it's almost like got shreds of like black cloth. And then on Ainsley's right, or your left, on the left side of the room, you see Medela and Mikey. They are seated, both with wrists bound, but they're not attempting anything. They're just sort of sitting there looking really nervous. And behind them is a, a another phalanx, cool, a female, large phalanx cool guard, standing watch over them, also holding a spear. And you are greeted. Uh, in fact, we should... S- We'll start off with the, <laughs> the typical villain welcome. Ah, <clears throat> oh, welcome back. I'm delighted to see you all return to me in such good health. However, your spirits seem to have suffered somewhat. Now, as we begin our trade negotiations, I would warn you not to attempt anything against me. You will find that the odds are stacked drastically against you, for I control your very reality, and at least we can enter discussions knowing these things about each other. And as he starts saying this, Mikey shouts out. He's begging for forgiveness. He's actually looking directly at Delvin, and his eyes are just like, he's been holding back. He's been told not to speak, it's clear, but he just bursts out. Begging for forgiveness. I tried to escape. I didn't want to tell them anything and they made me and I didn't. Silence! And as he says this, 
Mikey hasn't stopped talking. He's shouting, but his mouth. Disappears. You still hear it. But Harold pu- has pulled out a box, and inside that box is a small mouth shouting, I'm trying to tell you, I didn't even. And he shuts the box. And then Mikey is heard no more. He's sitting at the seat with skin covering his face where his mouth would be. Mm-hmm. Like, Right. Uh, an unfortunate way to start the proceedings, but regardless, please take a seat. I'd like to detect magic. Okay. So I can get my bearings in the room. Absolutely. Okay. You have two mana. Mm. You just sort of going to do a broad room sweep? Just a general... You could pro- you can hone in further based on what you get, okay. but it would be a challenge level one to do sort of the broad. Pew! Okay. okay, one success. You reach out with unseen sort of energies to feel through what you can notice through the room. There are actually a couple of items hung on the wall, somewhat high distances that have glimmers, very very f- fairly weak glimmers of magic. You certainly sense from the throne that Ainsley is sitting on. And oh, so as in him or from his throne? I'm just giving you direction. The direction. Yeah. Same as next to him, Harold. Mm-hmm. You sense magic emanating from him. You sense on the walls. There are a couple of things on the walls. One in particular, the uh, the coldish pick that Ainsley had pointed out. It's on the far end of the room on the right wall. This wall is not covered in many portraits or paintings or anything. It's much more reinforced. You can actually see the stonework of the wall itself and you sense on the cold, coldish pick. And I'm going to say... There are three other places on the wall on your left where you sense magic. Just random spots Just on the wall. Just associated like with rough. items. Okay, there would be things like there. portraits yep. and that sort of thing. Yep. Um, you sense magic immediately next to you. <clears throat> Who's that? Masked figure? Or cat? Catalina. Right, obviously. And in the direction of the masked figure. Yep. Uh, that is everything that comes to you Mm -hmm. with that check. Okay. Well, you're not going to turn down my hospitality, are you? It's very hard to have discussions and negotiations when standing at the back of the room. Walk forward. Don't say anything. Just walk forward. Yep. Are we avoiding pleasantries altogether then? Well... Would you like to have pleasantries? Is that part of... Ooh, a trade should always be pleasant. Especially if everyone involved gets what they want. Interesting. Let's start with what is already mine. Brick. <coughs> Harold steps forward and sort of claps and indicates to you a place uh, besides this large phalanx call. And it says... a male or the female. Uh, the male standing in front of the fireplace. I should point that out too. There is a fireplace. There's also a large chandelier. There's like sconces on the wall. So there's more than just like paintings and stuff. Like it's a it's a furnished room. There is furniture. There is a large fireplace, one of those ones that almost could fit you walking in, standing up, and it is, it's lit and very warm. Um, and uh, this Phelan call, who is referred to as Hawks, is told to stand aside, make room for... The new one. And he sort of shuffles across. Did I detect magic from Medela? From that direction, yes. Okay, from that direction. Yeah. Okay. I take my place next to Hawk. He doesn't acknowledge you, but you stand beside him. 
Welcome home, Brick. <clears throat> Thank you, Master. Now, let's begin. I offered you three things to choose from to bring to me. Which of them have you bought? Place the box on the table. The scepter. Interesting. He sort of like eyes Harold. He nods. Who barks at Brick. <coughs> Brick! Bring it to me, please. Very well. I pick it up and I move it to him. Okay. It's that first check of the evening. Can I do something? Not say something. You, what would you like so, to do? First, a quick question. How big and how heavy is the table that we're currently sitting at? It's a very large, heavy wooden table, round table. I'd say much like this, but adorned yeah. in gold. Okay. And I probably wouldn't be able to lift it, for example. It's quite heavy Oh, you could throw it forward if you need to, to desperately. Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, Just plant thinking ahead. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's it. Um, and the second thing is I, I, Delvin... I'm eyeing you. Okay. And then I focus and I want to read emotions <coughs> of the room. Okay. Roll your dice. Go, cat. Okay. Two now, successes. you've got two successes. I am going to give you everyone's rough, broad state of emotion. Okie dokie. There may be areas you want to sort of hone in on. But basically the main thing, this is like a general read. So you have a loose capture of the room as a snapshot. I'm actually going to say for the two... I'm going to give you this this room for mm -hmm. the foreseeable period of time. You you have a very efficient sort of general instinctual grasp on everyone in the room's emotional state. Yep. On a surface, like, well, not surface level. It's everyone else has the surface level. You have like that little bit deeper. You're sort of reading motives quite effectively or you that's what you can use it for. So ahead of you, Ainsley is very... Very excited. He is mm -hmm. really eager mm -hmm. and controlling his feelings of anticipation. Mm -hmm. Harold is uh, obedient mm -hmm. and feeling the need to do as is told. He, you feel sure. like he, it's this feeling of, of wanting approval. Yep, yep. Hox and Mish... The Phelan Cool guards yep. are really hard to read. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to okay. say because of the two you got, they're just like so void of active emotion that you know they're going to be tough cookies to crack. But it, the only emotional tether in any way, shape, or form that you sense from anyone in the room or at least from these, from Hox and Mish, are actually to each other. They're aware yep. of each other emotionally, but yep. it's very buried. Yep. Then you have the shadowy figure. Mm -hmm. The person dressed in black mm -hmm. is pretty void of emotion. Mm -hmm. Some of the other guards, it's sort of a mishmash. There's general a general state of unease and... and you know, tenseness, but they've been through these negotiations before. So. Are these the guards outside or are these, are there more guards in this room? There are, there are a couple in this room. A There's couple? like two behind you in the back corner. Two corners. at the door sort of. Yeah. Thing. Okay. What's the emotional state of the dog? <laughs> okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a destiny roll here. For the dog's emotions. Thirteen. You sense <laughs> that that emotional feeling that you're getting from Ainsley and the dog isn't quite there for some reason. Now, the dog is a dog. It doesn't feel all that much. But as you're... As you're doing this and uh -huh. as the room starts moving, was there any, anyone else in the room to... Uh, Medela and Mikey were the only two, but I they're, imagine they're scared. They're really scared. Yeah. Medela sort of looks up and... Well, I was going to say, like, you could actually... You can say yourself. 
What are your emotional uh, states? Yeah, sure. you I was just going to say, yeah, Med- Medela is being obedient. So she's not speaking up, but she's looking like you actually sense this feeling of relief in Medela. Because we rocked up. She's fearful, but she's so relieved. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Mikey, oh, it's such deep shame. Deep, Aww. deep, horrific shame. And sort yep. of like self hate. What are you feeling from Delvin and Brick? Resolve and acceptance. Okay. I am going <laughs> to just go out and say it. There is like a fire tornado beacon of emotion coming from Brick right now. Brick right now. It's like a weird mix of like inner torment, nausea. Anger, sadness, just fucking everything. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, Interesting. There's like the complete. Okay. I'm going to add to Delvin uh-huh. that you get the sense. Because you know I'm reading your emotions as well. Like, yeah, but you yeah. get the sense that this is a resolve and composure that is brought about through mental deliberate. Yep. Effort. Yeah. It is the it is the literal like internal mantra of like fear is the mind killer. Fear is this like the little death. That, like it's that kind of resolve and composure. You believe you yep. feel. Yeah. Just like <clears throat> I have to be still yep. in this moment. Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty practiced. At and that. Th- can you? Sorry. Can you find the dog again? I'm very confused. <laughs> the dog is a dog. There's not a lot of. Does it feel like I just can't hit that wall? Or maybe maybe it's because it's an animal. Who knows? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> secret <laughs> psychic dog. <laughs> now, uh, Harold uh, has indicated to Brick for you to pick up this. Mm-hmm. And I, I moved it closer or we'll put it around. Very good, Brick. You see, I assume he gave you no trouble as you gathered the uh, scepter. He was very well behaved. Good. As I hoped he would be. Harold opens up the chest lid. I am going to make a check. Perception check. This is challenge. Level. Let me just get the sheet. Okay. This is a challenge level six check. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Harold looks at it. Eyes sort of widen. It's just as beautiful as the day you first saw it, your lord. Delightful. I'm very pleased and impressed. How on earth did you get a hold of it without actually getting the mother's head in the first place. I would have thought that would be much easier. Interesting. Well, a magician never reveals their secrets, right? Oh, is that what they say? I like to play with mine. There is one last check to make. Harold, if you please. My dear Shadow, step forward. And this black-figured person steps forward up to the side of the table, sort of silently turns to face. Harold steps forward, hands over the scepter. And there's a moment of weird, like, waiting. Well... Because I've got that spicy detect magic. When they use magic, do I get, like, a little hot spot of magic happening? Not more You, info, you just might, like except flare-up. that there is markedly nothing happening. Okay. And does anyone's emotion shift as this okay, is happening? Okay, I will give you yeah. that the person who's holding, who's now holding this item, mm-hmm. there was an anticipation building, like a hopefulness, mm-hmm. and then a little bit of shock. A little bit of fear all of a sudden as okay. their head turns to Ainsley and they gently shake their head. Okie dokie. What 
No. No, no, no. You can't possibly be serious. And the silent head just shakes. <sighs> you... He looks at the group. You wouldn't have brought something to lie to me, would you? I'm a watcher. Lion's what I do, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay. This is deception check time. That's fine. <coughs> Watch me now roll nothing. Here it comes. Here it comes. Six successes. Three successes. Okay, at least we got statistical okay. averages. Okay, this is Ainsley. Oh. I fear you have brought me a counterfeit. A very, very convincing counterfeit. I would be shocked to know how this was put together if it perhaps weren't with very specific help. However, I am a merciful and kind dealer. And you feel this sort of bubbling rage, like mm -hmm. I was going to get my thing and you didn't give it to me, like that feeling in Sage. him, just like a child. So childish, ah. exactly what I was going to say. He takes a deep breath. <clears throat> I will be patient and overlook this insolence, as I have also mercifully overlooked the odd behaviors of your travels. I suspect all of which was to get this. He signifies at the black clad figure who's like sort of like gently lowers this thing in their hand. We'll point out that, um, I would say at this point they sort of put it back in the box. There's no point nestling, it's worth nothing anyway. And, and Harold just puts it on the table in front or between you all and steps back everyone steps back into the original place and Ainsley turns to you and says fear not it's okay I am merciful I happen to know that you he says looking directly at Catalina have a harp and you have a ring now this can all be dealt with very quickly and painlessly and in fact I can let your little friends go if you just give them to me Ainsley, you spoke of wanting pleasantries. So, why are we skipping the foreplay and going straight to the fucking? You Barrowans always think you can outsmart others. I admire many things about many cultures, as I have aptly shared with you in the past. But one of the things I enjoy most about the Phelan cool culture is obedience and an understanding of one's place. You see, they know. They know their role. They know their masters. They know who's truly in control. He's slowly patting this dog. And he looks at Harold and says, Oh, Harold, I... I believe Mittens has had a spill. <laughs> and he, Harold turns around and picks up the bowl of dog food uh -huh. and slowly turns it and drops it on the floor and steps back. Oh, dear me. Dear, dear, dear. No. No, Hawks. Clean it up, would you? Yes, Master. And he gets to his knees and starts licking up the dog food. You see, you the Phelan Cole know their place. And they do as they're told. And they are rewarded when they do as they're told. Now why don't you just do as you're told? I, I'm going to say, as you see this, uh -huh. for the first time, you feel the emotion of Hawks. 
well off. Right. Great. It's a uh, real, sh- I wouldn't even say shame because he's doing as he's told, humiliation, mm-hmm. deep, a deep mm-hmm. humiliation that is still buried. It's not, he's never been allowed to feel it. So it's just yep. buried. Okay. But you also sense from Mish, this across the room, standing behind the two kids, this slight heartbreak. Yep. I'd like to act upon that unless you want to do something first. Oh, you can start to play with things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, so, sorry, Mish is the one that's currently on the ground and Hox <coughs> is the one. No, Hox is on the Hox ground. Hox is on the ground. The Mish is the one friend. that's... Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to start with Mish. Um, I want to... So I've got her emotion. Mm-hmm. His emotion, her emotion. Which I can't You've got a general sense of everyone. Cool. I want to really amplify that. I want to start bringing that out. Mish? To, yes. Okay. Cool. Um, that sense of, like, humiliation and hatred. Like, the, the, this is Anger. Isn't yeah, you yet. find... You f- dig in there. There's a mix of different things, like a sadness for Hawks. You're going for the female at the back, right? Correct, yes. Uh, but you find a uh, you find a hatred in there for Ainsley. Great. One that is in a room that's locked and the key's been thrown away because that is not what a Fallon call is allowed to feel, but you found the key. Great. I really just want to pop that up as much okay. as I possibly can. It's going to be very difficult. That's cool. Okay. Yep. So you can make a check. Okay. He uh, By this stage, he sort of stands up and like, what you know, wipes his face? He just stands there and just stands like a sentinel. So this is this one is going to be. So this is to grab, like, really read her emotions to find that challengeable too, okay. to to find that hatred. Okay. Two successes. Okay. You've got it. It's like Great. this pinch within. It's like you found the needle in the haystack. Now anything you do with it is going to be really difficult. Okay, so I'm going to hold that. Yeah. And again, uh, y- yep. Teacher. Yes, on the front. <laughs> if we could, if we could prolong this engagement, is it possible to amplify these emotions in stages? Yeah. That's easier. Yeah. Like slowly build for it sure. rather than going for like a straight yes. to fully 100%, burning. Hundred cool. percent. And that Just would be thought. that would be the wise thing to do. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to hold on, hold yeah. on to that. Okay. So you've got it. I'm going to let you have that for a, a while so you can Great. do things with it. So I kind of eye delve in and I kind of... You didn't. specifically has, have her hatred yep. to Ainsley. That's cool. what you've got. I'm going to eye delve in and kind of like... There is a, uh, a latch at the door <clears throat> and it's sort of gently opened and, uh, and a, a masked head pops in, sort of one of the other guards sort of steps up to them and they, they whisper and they cross the room. The click clacks and the echoing steps as they cross the room and lean into Harold's ear and whisper something. And Harold looks like surprised and then rather delighted. Well, I see them in. They sort of walk back out. In that little window before anyone comes in, they say, <coughs> Ainsley, if there is a time to gloat over defeated people, it's now. Would you humor me by answering some questions? I don't know if you can tell, but I'm not feeling very humorous this evening. I don't like when I don't simply get what I want, so I don't want to play your games now. And in fact, I have rather little patience for people who want to skirt around the meat of the negotiation. Well... The reason... I purchased these two in the first place was to be able to breed my own superior versions of them, and that isn't turning out as I wanted it to either. There is an emotion shift of disgust in, like, unhideable disgust in Delvin as he just goes, like, of repulse. Sometimes you don't get what you pay for or what you want. This isn't one of those times. So I don't want to answer your questions. I just want what I've asked for. Then perhaps we can cordially resume and have a chat. And I could answer some of your questions. How about payment terms? And I pull off the ring and like put it on the table and then flick it across the room to him and say, half up front. Your ring? Yep. You flick it Straight across the room. Like roll, not in a violent way, just like put it on the table and flick it across the room. 
I see. Harold? He steps forward and gently picks it up, looking at you cautiously. You're not deceiving, so I won't make mm. any checks, and he just sort of carries it. He holds it. Make a perception check. <clears throat> Four. Okay. I'm going to have to make a deception check against your four. This will be Harold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all very tense. Okay, so this is his deception. Okay, you got four? Mm-hmm. Okay. Two. You notice there's a, a hesitation as he walks to the chair. You notice... He goes to give it and actually double takes, like, oh, no, I can't do that. Um, when you're interrupted, the rear door of the room So he, he, wanted, he wanted to give it and couldn't or wanted to take it and couldn't? He had a moment of, like... Oh, that's all I'll give you. That's what you noticed. I, just, I was just unclear on... I think I missed what you said. <clears throat> I was a little bit confused about exactly he, what happened. He hesitated. Okay. He hesitated in handing it over? Yes. Okay. But did he hand it over to the door? No, he, he doesn't. The door okay. opens. And and uh, a group of people are standing in there, escorted by a, a bunch of these theatrical guards. And Ainsley says, oh, I see we have our guests that have arrived. I will go uh, put that away in my chamber, would you? And uh, Hawks, please see them to the back of the room. Catalina, I think you will be surprised and delighted with this arrival. Uh, Harold leaves through the door at the rear of the room. I should point out there are two other doors in this room. One single door at the very back of the room, opposite of the double doors. Same door that um, people were retreated out of, well, like well, that same where he left last time you met with him. Mm-hmm. There's another one to the right of the room in the back corner. Um, another single door. We temporarily have one less Harold in the room. That's good. That's one less Harold in the room. I don't know what Harold can do, but that one less true. of them yeah. is an advantage. Okay. Temporarily. Um, I slightly nudge your foot under the table and I'm just like, I just say, um, hopefully by the end of the night, a lot of people will change the way they feel about certain situations here. Okay. <laughs> start doing it, yeah, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start, start I, that ball rolling. I, okay. Go. While this is happening. Yeah, there's a group of people... Uh, there are six people and one withered-looking, dirty, mm-hmm. garbed, older-looking man covered in a sack mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, being dragged forward, sort of yep. dark, and this in has poking out from under the sack. Okay. It's very convincing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so while that is happening, I want to focus attention to Hawk now. And do I feel that their emotion towards the other is stronger than the hatred that they feel for or of their feelings they about feel. for each other. Yes. It's everything is so equally barriered Great. from being felt. Okay. So it'll all it'll all be the same sort cool. of challenge. That's fine. Then I'll go with the hatred again as well and do it for Hawk this time. Okay. You dig around for a challenge or two. How lucky can I get? Uh, I will spend a destiny to make it too. Okay. To hold your mana. Yes. Okay. You find it. It's harder to find because there's, if there is emotion when you dig deeper and deeper and deeper, it's more shame and uh, embarrassment. Yep. But you do find deep in there a resentment and anger towards Ainsley. Great. This group of people uh, gather at the back of the room (coughs) and sort of lumped in the back corner, sort of near where that rear door is. Um, and then Hox returns to his place beside Brick. I'm going to say, like, while this, this is uh, a bit of a production is made out of it, and Ainsley is like, well, I have a very special guest who's come to join us. Catalina, your dear father, it turns out, all holed up in the uh, Watcher's Woods. A rather primitive place from what I hear of it. I have this uncanny habit of holding on to captives because they're rather lazy sometimes. You'll admit it, won't you, boys? That they uh, rather hold on to captives to do all the hard work for them. So, your father is here. He's been hard at work for some time now. 
but he can be returned to you peacefully. If only... Uh, and he looks at your satchel. Off in the distance, you hear... Just some bells. You know, you've heard these bells before. You heard them the same time last night. They just indicate a, a changeover of the guard and a point in the evening that things swap over a little bit. Okay. I, while he's spilling his little deal, I'm going to amplify whoever's emo- either of the two's emotions. <laughs> yep, Bring stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You're going to amplify one of them. Yep. Okay. Um, while you're focusing on this, and we'll do that in a moment, mm-hmm. you everyone roll a perception check. I feel like we're going to need to start doing something. No, oh, I am. Two. Right, that, yeah. Okay. You will. Sorry. Okay. Brick notices. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good briefing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brick but, yep. notices. Kind of out of nowhere. Actually, I will I will give it to you just because you're holding on to an emotional state here. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, oh, I'm going to give you two things. <clears throat> okay, Brick notices in that moment. Uh, so the, it, it's sort of out of nowhere. Ainsley sort of shifts in his seat and um, his hands are sort of moving on the seat. And his demeanor shifts. He seems really quite pleased. Catalina notices this anticipation has sort of been there since Harold left the room. And after some time, that's when you feel his emotions shift with great pleasure and absolute um, a, a sort of vindication. Harold's emotions. Yep. Now I'm going to get let Delvin. Okay. I'm going to let you make a check. And it will be a challenge of a one for your magic. Wait, Harold or Ainsley's? Delvin, you notice a surge, a little, little bump of power in the direction of the portrait of Ainsley in the centre of the wall behind where the shadow was sta- is standing. So, dear Catalina, everything is coming together very nicely. At least it would be if if the the final part of the exchange occurred. If you please. The challenge level three, I'm imagining. Are you doing the amplifying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is, yeah. Okay. It'll be challenge level three Mm -hmm. to enrage, to, to build on that. And it will just sort of, it won't. They're not going to start acting out, mm-hmm. but it'll just make it a more human emotion. In Hox, is that who you're going for? The uh, one next to Brick? Sure. What? Yeah, it doesn't change okay. either way, right? Challenge of all three. This is very important. Did it feel like it was from the portrait or from the room behind the portrait? It felt like it was from behind the portrait. Okay. And you could roll another challenge level one check. Two... To, to learn a little more about what's happening there. I have to. Yeah, yeah you do yours. Yep. Okay. You become immediately aware that Ainsley is not in the throne. He's behind the portrait. Mm-hmm. Okay. You have a chance do I get a full feeling of how far behind the portrait he is? You... Not, not for that role. Okay. I've, I feel like w- yep. with more, maybe. <clears throat> All right. It's challenge level three. You burn two mana. You can use destiny I to preserve one. I am going to use destiny to preserve, which means I am out. Okay. But you're pushing mm-hmm. your magical abilities. And it's, yep. if anything, this reflects how hard what you're doing is. Mm-hmm. This is <laughs> this is basically the entirety of, of you know, Brick's existence and gradual coming to terms with his own emotions that happened organically. You're trying to like brute force this as soon as possible to like 
piss yeah. this dude off. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard and you feel like the magic slipping and you're probably holding your harp at this point because it's a, an open secret in the room, like you're supposed yeah. to hand this thing over and it probably gives you some comfort as you channel this energy. Mm-hmm. But you feel it and you it's not like he's not about to snap anytime soon. But Brick, you scored a really high perception. You notice his stance sort of change and there's like this slight tighter grip. This this just tense stance in this soldier next to you. I mirror it, mirror him. Okay. Well, do please hand it over. So while he's been talking, Catalina has just had her head down and like hands on the table, but not making eye contact with him, and she still remains to do the same. Delvin leans in and does a the discreet like you're at the meeting table, you're clearly whispering. But I whisper to yeah. Catalina and I just lean across and go, Ainsley's in the room behind the portrait. That's an illusion. Catalina like f- then looks up. And just lean back. Mm. Well, girl, on with it. One of your kinds with me having one of those things anyway. As I am to understand, it's beneath you. Should be a relief to let it go. How do you feel about that, Catalina? Harold has re-entered the room. He enters through the rear door. Okay. Well, I, I don't think it's his to have. But... If, if we're to save my father... So Brick is standing with the two Phelan call. One. One Phelan call. I look at Kat and I go, if we're going to do something, when are we going to do it? Catalina kind of leans to you and says, you need to say something pretty (coughs) damn convincing right now. As you sort of whisper that, you, uh, you have felt this brewing of emotions throughout the whole room. Everyone's sort of fluctuating in interesting ways. And it doesn't surprise you that in the corner where Mikey and Medela are sitting, there's sort of this slow building of fear and tension. Um, but Medela sort of can't help but burst out a little bit at one point while you're discussing this. Don't do it, Catalina. It's, it's a thing of beauty. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't... Don't you dare interrupt our dealings. He says, sort of snidely looking across. You're sort of painfully aware at this point. Ainsley hasn't moved. Yeah. He's sat perfectly still. <laughs> right. Well, I guess it's worth telling you the truth then. And what is that, Barrowan? Or should I say, Sparrow? <sighs> that what you think is useless. Wait. Hey, you knew my little moniker. I know more than you think I do. Oh. It would be wise to not play games and give me what I want. I'll give you better than what you think you want. And what is that? The scepter you so wisely decided is worthless. He, his eyes dot at the scepter. What you didn't realize. What, realize what? (laughs) It's just as magic as the one you wanted, but in a different way. Just because none of your cronies have the right type of magic to tell. It's not what I asked for. (laughs) Okay. He's getting impatience. His anger is building at this point. And I'm going to say that surge of magic you felt before, mm. the, the general energy you sort of felt from that direction was the same sort of magic, but it's like it swelled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, if, if you want to dissect that part of the room, I will let you for a challenge level two, but you also don't have to because that's expensive. I'm going to, so I kind of slam my hands on the table. And I look directly at Ainsley and I say, you are just the smallest man. How can you be so pathetic? 
you trample over all of these poor people. You do horrible things. Oh dear, don't shed tears in this room. It's a waste of time. But you enjoy it, don't you? Enjoy tormenting people and ripping (laughs) apart their souls. I kind of nudged over. (laughs) Yes, my dear, I do. Because stupid people don't understand how easy they are to control and how worthy I am for what they have. So don't talk back to me in my room when I hold the power. And as he sort of shouts this, let me get his character sheet. (laughs) Okay. What's the success level of this spell? That's a good question. Because I have a Locky Lou on him, so I can interfere potentially mm. depending on what he's casting. Yeah. He's, it, it's nothing threatening. Mm. Um, I'm just going to roll. Okay. Basically, he his eyes ignite with flame mm-hmm. and he, the claws like come out of his hands and the dog on his lap sort of jumps down and runs away and then yips. And uh, the room sort of, darkens and sort of seems to expand and then contract. It's like he's warping the entire space around you. And that feeling of, that commanding feeling is overwhelming. What were you going to say? I... Do I have the strong sense that this is an illusion? I've done two magic checks on him doing stuff. I, I'll give you a challenge of a one for a little bit more information. Yes. Okay. You have a strong sense that's exactly the type of magic you had when you had that ring. So it's about perception of things. Mind mentality, wasn't it? It was mind mentality. So it's that's a vibe of perceive, per how you perceive the world, potentially. Potentially. <laughs> okay. I step out of my chair Uh, uh, uh. and uh, he nods at Brick and says Brick keep your little friend in his place will you yes master and I walk up behind I you've got a long table to round I'm on the side of it Brick on your side of it I step on the table there's a little voice from the back corner of the room like Brick, what are you doing? He doesn't own you, Brick. I know you were taught that. I know I was taught that, but it's not true. Be quiet! I, so standing from my chair, I just step on the table and stand up on the table and start walking across the table with a large dining table all around me. You're standing on the table. You're standing on the table. What do you do? I mean, if he jumped up there quicker than I could have stopped him, he's up there. I mean, you were like, you're high. You, you were got the same the reflex. Guard, Roll right? off reflex. But you were at least no, no, no. You're five the, meters away from me, right? Is it the table? No, it was about three. Like he's he. I pictured them at the opposite end because he called you over to he where he's on your right. Yeah. In front of the fireplace, next to Hawks. But it's a big table, right? It's okay. I'll roll a one. Okay. <laughs> So he's going, he's declared that he's going to jump up on top of the table. What do you do? I reach to grab him, but miss. I <laughs> I want to intervene and read his emotions. Unlike any deal I've ever done. Get down. I just start walking across the table towards him. Define him. Ainsley's seated illusion, as, as Delvin perceives it. Get away from me. What are you doing? Stop it at once. And I just say, you all sit here and obey a man and his tricks and he ain't even fucking there. And then I just go and jump onto his chair. Okay. You jump onto his chair. I'm going to let you, for a challenge level one, mm-hmm. break this illusion down. Okay. And I would attempt it. Success. 
So I just slam into the chair like feet first and land on his throne and stand there. And using just that little bit of magic and you don't need much because it's like you're breaking the illusion in people's minds as you do that, a dummy appears in the shape of Ainsley wearing his outfit with a hessian tied sack for a face and a fake beard and hair. Just sort of like the head like lilts to the side. Is everyone shocked they, or...? Uh, Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Except for the watchers at the back of the room, yeah. they're like, "Ah, uh, excuse me, what the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and some of the some of the masked yep. people. Mm-hmm. I would. Have I imagine not for the. History. Shut up, you fucking fat, useless bastard! And then I just don't. Do, I shout louder than he can talk. I, uh, as you shout that, ooh, I'm going to have to... Yeah, sure. He shouts, Harold! And Harold reaches up his arm. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, like, you're you're kneeling on that, on the throne on where Angela's mm-hmm. lap would be. You feel like a hug around your entire body. Make in the, it, let's see. Yeah. Try it. Yep. Try it, baby. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, Harold. Okay. So, I'm going to say to work against this, it would be an athletics or a grip check. I can. But, counter spell and you can counter spell. So, okay. what level is he looking for? Two. Okay. He's looking for challenge level two. So he's burnt her mana. I'm going to go to. You feel like it's like one of the tightest like mm-hmm. gr- feelings of like being held in your place you've ever felt. Come on, successes. Oh, that's a fail. That's one six. It's one. One success. I'm going to burn a destiny to hold my mana. Yeah. So I succeed. So yep. I just, Delvin just like, he looks at the hand and then just like bats it aside and he's just like, fuck off with that, mate. And just dispels it into yeah. the wind. I would have said after Delvin jumped on the table and got away from me, I would have made my way around the left side of the table to catch up to him. Okay. To catch up to Delvin? Slowly, but yes. My intent being move to the, moving to the other side of the table towards Mr. Man in Black and... Me short, whatever the hell her name is. Okay. But this is a destiny roll. Towards that. Okay. I have two rolls to make, and I'm not going to tell you what they're for. One is, okay. And two is. Oh, they were both okay. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Do I have any moment to try and attempt to do anything? That was your turn. Okay. Okay. And that was Harold's <laughs> turn. Ainsley takes his turn. Mm hmm. And large spikes, like from a Barrowin contraption, spring out in multiple directions from the throne itself. One of them gets your leg, but I'll let you roll. Is like a spike a, that stabs into his own chair? Huh? No, it's out. It's but out I'm, of the chair. Standing on the chair. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's every direction. It's multiple directions. Okay. Trapped, yeah. It? So uh, you're gonna have to roll. I'll get you to just make an unarmed combat roll um, and it won't be defensive because it's reaction mm-hmm. reacting so it's just five dice yeah I think and I'm gonna say that the trap got three uh, you got two so can I take an armor you can take an armor. damage all yeah. right so smashes into my new brigandine yeah yeah I don't think I will let you take the armor actually when I think about it. Sorry if it's if it's a combat fight, but I think this is like a spring-loaded trap that has a result and I think it's meant to pierce. So in other circumstances I, okay. I you know, but I think realistically its whole purpose has just been sprung mm-hmm. and it, it got one on you. Cool. Stabs you in the leg a little bit. But you know, that's one combat dice. Um, I would like to do something when a turn is available. Where, what, what is uh, 
Catalina's. So Catalina realizes through all of this. stuff's going down. She just wants to push as far as she can, even if it results in hurting herself. Like she really just wants these guys to feel like this is enough. Like we're fighting. They need to stand up. They need to do something about this. Like enough's enough. Okay, so you're pushing emotion. Yeah. Okay, who? Is it one that's more willing than the other? Uh, I'm going to say Hox is a little more shocked and you've already worked him. Yep. I'm going to say Mish mm-hmm. may uh, Mish would probably be who you would naturally go to next. Yep. Uh, the woman at the back. Sure. Um, I'm going to say being unguarded, it'll be challenge level two. Yep. All um, right. Yeah, it's like so a guard let down. This is, these are exceptional circumstances. No. <clears throat> Okay, so... You burn both, you burn a destiny, what's the go? That's your last mana. That was, yeah, that's it. Okay, but you do it. She starts welling with, like, shock and, and rage that... I, I think, actually, probably the thing that you're channeling most out of her is... Hox and Mish would probably not... Would probably have been surprised out of everyone in the room they probably wouldn't have been yeah cool that's actually yeah. what I wanted so to say so it's more like yeah. uh, the surprise that it's so like dishonourable yeah I want them to make yeah. make him them feel like he's like little like yeah he's below absolutely yeah. yeah so you find that and you work that okay meanwhile I'm gonna say next we're sort of moving into well this is now active yep. combat so uh, let us proceed now the fastest person no, no loud postulating speeches available <laughs> i tried okay <laughs> it wasn't very good okay that's why she didn't get into politics okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so fastest person in the room is shadow um slowest is catalina yep you don't have reflex is i that have one in reflex. you have one. Oh, actually Yes. Everyone's kind of the same. Okay, roll off. Or? Uh, yeah, everyone roll off. Five. Four. One. Time for the watchers to do okay. something. Hey. So Cat declares first, then you were five, you were four. Okay, so then Brick. So that was. So Cat was one. Brick was four. Delvin was five. Okay. So, watches. Three. So I'm just going to put them all in one group. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would be... Okay. Oh, dramatic. Okay. And then we have Harold. Oh. Oh. Bet you they were all sixes just to fuck with us. <laughs> Mm. <clears throat> okay. And then... Dwarf. Okay. Hox and Mish. I'm mm-hmm. going to get them in a sec. Bit of, bit of a... Just I'm just letting the tension build. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. You should just have all of them open. I. That's it. 100. Right. Yeah. They. They need to roll. I'm going to roll for them separately. Hox is five. Same as Delvin. Uh, let's roll off just Hox and Delvin. Three. He's four. Yeah. First. Yeah, so I love it when they always all get to the clear before yeah. us. And Mish. Uh, four rolls off with Brick. Yeah. Six oh. rolls, rolls off again. again. <laughs> hey. They're really good okay. rolls. There you Fuck. Go. Okay, so uh, Brick declares first. Well, all the other chumps go first, right? Um, I declare first, but go last. Yeah. yeah. And then we have... I'm third last. Shadow. So it's only Harold and Mish. Mish that's ahead of me? Or was it Hot? Shadow. What okay. did he roll? He's got, I'm assuming he's got two reflex. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, so Shadow's very last. There's a shout that reverberates around the room. Oh, okay. Let me think how to how to do this. Because Ainsley's got stuff he can do now. <laughs> or 
does he? Who knows? Maybe. Maybe not. Hopefully not. <laughs> okay. Delvin. The very audacity. You hear this shout like reverberate around the room like it's surrounding you. Um, okay. There is going to be a push, a force of will upon you, of magic. You feel it encroaching upon you. Um, that is the declaration. Mm -hmm. But you have a moment to act first because you are quicker. So you f the, the, you feel this intention of a sapping of your mental faculties. Now I should I should uh, say that there have been a couple of times where I've done these things where people get plus one or minus one or plus or minus to rolls, but it's been very broad. But there I, I've done more thinking about it as time goes on. Um, it will have been negative when Ainsley did it to you guys, or positive to any intelligence mm -hmm. or reflex based checks, things that really involve. Uh, cognition more than physicality. Um, cool. So that is what is intended to come your way. Next declaration, Kat. I'm first. Um, I'm... <laughs> Kat's going to go under the table um, because she sees everything that's going on and she thinks it's going to be pretty hectic fight. But her aim is to... So she's going to go under the table and pull out her dagger. Okay. And her target is that painting. I was I was thinking I was going to get some Scanlan action under the table, like playing some harp to inspire I mean, I, us. I can, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so her turn is literally just going on the table and looking and seeing if there's a window available. Prepping to, to go leave. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Next we have the watchers. Do you signal in a free I, action? Do you? Yeah, I think yeah. it was pretty clear that They're now's like, the time to act. Now's the time. Yeah. All right. And what are you sort of signaling them to do? To, um. Like they start pulling out, you know what? swords and stuff. I I direct, I just say like, um, deal with him, and I just point at the shadow. Okay, all of them on him. Okay. <laughs> oh boy! Woo! Oh boy! I know he's a badass, but that's the, we just got to dogpile the badass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. Brick. Can't fight and they start. They start charging yeah. forward, but it'll take him around to the scurry from the back of the room. Yep. So, yeah. he's going to get flanking. So I was still after Delvin as he hit the chair, and the spikes came out of the chair. But I would say I'd still be after him. Yeah. So as he's jumped off the chair, and all of this is taking place, I'm going to like reach for him and like lean over the chair in an attempt attempt to grab him. Oh, you're but, gonna have to roll deception, but yeah, go on, because you're still faking doing what you're told. I'm trying. He is very quick. Come on, don't don't play dumb. You're making it look like you're following orders. You're not trying to apprehend him. So, so if you're, if you're not trying to apprehend him, you're rolling a deception check. That's the rule. What are you doing? What are you doing? I roll deception under the assumption that most people aren't looking at me. Roll a perception. Perception? Deception. Yeah. You can assume whatever you want. You're rolling a deception. Other people roll perception. That's your hey. deception? Hey. Yeah. yeah. He's got negative he everything on everything. everything. Oh, I haven't. <laughs> says the man with He's like 500 combat yeah. dice. Yeah, I know. But less like than a, a spy guy. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, have to, I have to play straight. That's the shit thing. It's fine. Okay. I'm making some perception rolls now. Sure. And I won't tell you who they're for. Hmm. Three. Hey, okay. can I suggest some kind of modifier for the fact that he's a Phelan called so people would assume he's always going to do what he's told? To so, I mean, it's not going to beat four, but some kind of circumstantial modifier. I'll give you... What did you roll? One. I'll one. give you plus two wins. Ah, oh, thanks. I'll take How's it. that? I'll take there you go. It. That guy still plus. wins, though. Yes. He got four. That guy also... <laughs> you were very bad at being deceptive. You're actually really not good at um, yeah. pretending you're fighting. <laughs> I know that. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. 
I didn't even get to what I wanted to do. Okay. This now isn't even the play. <laughs> this is just some <laughs> random thing. My mm. point is to fall into the chair. That's a roll off with one. Why do you want to fall into the chair? That's a roll off with two. Um, and then last but not least, I've got one more to go. Hang on a second. Okay. Okay. Hey! Okay. <laughs> one person didn't right. notice. So, the, the roll off is with two failing call. Cool. So the question I have for you is, do you want them to think you're trying to follow orders? Because I will give you the option to not have them think you're following orders, to signal to them that you're being defiant. That one moment. Because all it contact. would take, yeah, all it would take is like, it wouldn't take much communication and you can speak another language. So there's that too. <laughs> What does Brick do in this moment? Because I think it would be, you would probably have the feeling, okay, my act is up now. Like this is the, yeah. You didn't even know what I'm trying to do. <laughs> no, as far as like people assuming that you're following orders. No. You no? don't let them know you're breaking your check, okay? Okay, so it's a roll off then. For what? Because because they matched you, oh. so it's still a roll off. So they may just know you're breaking orders. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now make your roll plus two wins. You still three get again. three. So this is okay. They notice. <laughs> they notice. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I wanted to do in the first place. Okay. As I fall into the chair, trying to avoid these spikes poking out of, out of all of it, at the very back at the base of the chair where his butt is, I'm gonna put the De the mining charge behind the dummy yep you will have had to grab it from the table i was holding the mining no, charge no, the oh spare were one. you um, yep ah okay cool um and i'm just i want to make it look like i'm fumbling because there's fucking spikes okay out of it. all right well, does it look what... like he ever sits in that chair though huh does it look like he ever actually sits that's in a that whole chair? different role that okay. is probably irrelevant for okay. the way. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> who's next okay uh next <laughs> Do I, do I accomplish that? I'm going to say it's in there. You don't know who notices yeah, or fine. not. Um, Should have put on a dog. At this point, Mix, dog. Mish's declaration is to grab Medela and hightail it out of the back of the room. Hey, that's better than murder. Yeah. Um, Delvin, your declaration. Right. I am going... Look, this is so rule of cool, but I don't know if it's going to work because I don't know if this is within the realms of my magic. I have the reflex drop. I can sense that there is this magical force beginning to close on me. And I have my powers. Can I, in the moment of realising the magic is about to close on me, throw my hand forward and, like, grab onto Harold and let my body become a conduit using my magic to just pass the spell through me into him? Ooh, okay. That's... I'm going to say yes, it's two rolls, though. Okay. And it's not going to be easy. And it won't... Uh, you can attempt it. Okay. I won't tell you the effects, but I think you can attempt it. Okay. And on my turn, I'm going to attempt that. Um, and I'm also going to gl glare at Brick and then just throw my hand towards Ainsley's portrait and say, He's behind there! Break your goddamn shackles! And then I'm going to throw my hand at Harold and try and do my thing. Okay. Y you're... Attempting to re-channel Ansley's thing. All right. Very cool. Hawks, in the meantime, notices Brick sort of do a fa faux thing. A fa faux faux thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let Catalina decide mm -hmm. for her turn. Mm -hmm. Since you basically gave yourself a free action, your whole thing is like, I'm down there and I'm prepping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you feel... A, a shock and an indignance and then a sort of weirdly distant pride that's being shoved down. Okay. Can I can I do anything to that or is that going to be a role which I don't have? Do you have or, destiny? No, I'm out. She's cool. Or I obviously... 
do the thing I don't want to do. Which is? Break the harp. <laughs> what, what in, cat? why is that Catalina's instinct? Well, no, no, I'm asking, like, is, is, I was in, can I, that, can I do anything with this or would it result in a roll? You can roll to push it. Yep. But you have a feeling it actually, yeah, it, it might, break. it might damage. Uh, it's going to be a challenge level two. You've done enough. And it's going to work. You know that. Catalina's not going to do it, but she is that emotion going to stay? Like, is there an option to do it if all else fails? You, I don't, I can't give you that. But what I can tell you is if you do it, it will work. Yeah. She's not going to do it this turn. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Next, we have Harold. Mm hmm. So you declared first. He notices you aiming at him with his uh, with your intention. He doesn't know what you're about to do, but he felt you break off what he was just doing. And I'm going to say because the, you all declared first, he heard what you said to Brick. Mm -hmm. And he snaps to, like, react to that. Mm -hmm. And so he like a force unseen goes to grab Brick and yank him into the spikes of the chair. <laughs> okay, that is his declaration. Mm -hmm. Let's move forward. Last but not least, the shadow standing in front of the portrait. And not moving. I oh, see so he's directly in front of the portrait, mm -hmm. like protecting it. Okay. Has been the whole time. Yep. Except for when they step forward to like check the scepter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just standing there watching. And let me just think for a moment. <laughs> you have your crossbow fire. Min, min, min. Oh, it doesn't do much. It goes. I, but I could fire, fire it at the portrait. Mm. Oh, you, have a, you also just have a crossbow. Not that you're skilled with it, but you, you have a crossbow. Fire. Okay. Yeah, with the fire. Oh, and light oh, on fire. Oh shoot! Oh, okay. Wow. Mm. Good luck. That's what you should spend your turn doing. Light yep. the fucking arrow on the yep. end of your bot, your crossbow. Yep. yep. Light the light Ainsley's beautiful face on fire. Perfect. We can't light his real face Perfect. on fire. At least we can fucking light well, his canvas on fire. It'll depend if he's in front of it. Because if he's in front, he's just going to catch it. Oh, but. maybe. Know, who knows? I've got plenty of arrows. I can sit under the table and do it for like... And if he's busy catching an arrow, he's going to be worrying about seven watches charging towards him. Yeah. It's true. Okay. I t uh, they look like they're standing there just watching the room. Who do, sorry? Uh, the shadow. Yep. Their head turns sort of snaps towards Harold. I'm going to just give you a free sense because you've sort of done mm. this detect magic. You sense this surge between the shadow and Harold and there's something that this shadow is doing that is able to... It, it's it's not like your magic, but it, there's something about their uh, strengthening what Harold's about to do, but it's not, it's not strengthening. It's like, it's like this supernatural ability to help the trigger of timing and pick the exact spot. It's like a guiding invisible hand of the universe itself, shifting everything into the right place to make it happen as Harold is choosing for it to happen. And then it all unfolds. <clears throat> we start with I'm going to make uh, the roll for the shadow. Okay. Arrow only has one mana, so at least his power is only okay. one. I mean, it's boosted, but it's still... Hey, he rolled only one success. Okay. They're all hopefully losing their mana. Okay. 
Harold only has one mana. It can't be that fucking powerful a force with one mana to throw you into the chair. Or that. Like, oh, we got to kill these bastards. Mm -hmm. Guys, keep stiff up a limp. We can do this. Saying this is you just touching his face. Pick up the fucking <laughs> box. Go charge at Ainsley like an American football okay. player and blow it up. Ooh, okay. <laughs> um. <sighs> okay. Tell me, Dazzler. Yep. What does your confused look for? <laughs> Harold. Mm -hmm. Harold. Gets to roll one dice. Damn. Success. There is this f surge, like someone, you know, normal size has jumped and just kicked both feet into your back and shoved you forward without your being prepared for it. But it is weirdly in exactly the spot that you were, would be caught out of balance and slip so in I, that. I don't get to counter roll against with endurance or anything like that? You, well, you will, um, but... I'm going to say, so that was one success from Harold plus the effect that the shadow had. I'm going to say it's a challenge level six for a gripper endurance Holy to crap. counter. You can do it, Brick. Good luck. Magic is basically uncounterable, so Don't that's forget pretty you good. Got that destiny. It's, it's something. It's something. It's one, not two, enough, three, but it was four. something. It was four. Yeah. Yay. Okay. It's a level two injury. Oof. So you pretty... Can I use armor? Pardon? Can I use armor? Mm. You should be able to I use strength. At you can use strength. I'm not going to let armor. I think when it comes to magic in particular, like this stuff is, you know... It's a little different than to just combat. But yes, you can use your strength counteracting. I will reduce it by one. Okay. It takes everything you've got, but your whole body is shifted barely just out of the way and it just scrapes like shoves through your shoulder in a meteor part, but not in a way that you can't yank out in a you know an effective way and still be able to be a combatant. Mm -hmm. But that was close. Like, as you do that, you see, like, this spike, like, right between your eyes that was, like, ugh, going right for you. Pretty Oofed. pretty frightening stuff. Okay. Hawks. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do, Catalina? Because I'm going to let that be a free action. Oh, um, if, you, if I was Hawks, or like, what I'd want him to do. If you, well, Hawks' turn would be different if you did anything. That's all I'm saying. And I'll give you that option in future turns if you want to save it. Okay. Uh, I fire up the crossbow. Okay. Yep. Uh, you know, but you've already declared. So you can't re-declare. I'm just sort of basically saying, do you want to do the emotion thing? Oh. I'm basically going to let you choose it as a yes or no in come upcoming turns. If it was no before, it's no for Hawks too this turn. Simple. It's the yeah. same turn. Nothing's changed. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So well, I only ask because that would affect Hox's turn and it's Hox's yeah. turn. Yeah. No. So at this point, he goes for Delvin. What did he declare? Wait, what did he declare? I don't think he did. One of the, yeah. One of them took. Mish took picked up Medela and has started moving. They've just sort of started scrambling. Medela's struggling and like screaming out and like, Shouting, no, don't you dare leave them alone. Mm. So she's like fighting up against it. So it's not a rapid movement. Um, Mikey's just sort of working against his restraints. Mm -hmm. He's sort of been ignored a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Hawks. What was his declaration again? I don't think I made I one. I don't think he did one. Okay. Well, he would have gone for Delvin. So He's higher than me anyway, so. Yeah. Or He's going he? for Delvin. Yeah? Yeah? Higher reflex, rolled faster, yeah. Okay. So there's only three that are faster than me. It was the Shadow, Harold, and Hox, was it? Yes. Okay. 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 Yay! One, two, three. And I'm, I'm just rolling this Hox's combat roll. It's just like basically 
a non-lethal way to try and trip you up and, what, and what restrain did you, get? you. Three. Three successes. Okay. So your combat will be your defense as well, and you're next anyway. So, uh, And your declaration was... To reach out towards... And do the channeling thing. Mate. But you're still doing that. So that's three. Okay, but um, I don't have my weapon, so it's just five dice. <coughs> Two Oof. successes. Okay. He gets a level one victory. Mm -hmm. You take one unless you, you don't have strength. Is he doing injury? Uh, like I said, that were, it was probably would have been to restrain. I'd say it's a stagger. Okay, well, I can't do anything against a stagger. Okay. But it's not going to affect my roll. No, I'll let your yeah. magic be okay. uninhibited. So your magic roll mm -hmm. is... Well, Ainsley's counted. magic roll, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to do Ainsley's, Ainsley's now in the interest of what's happening. Ooh. Oh, he might have lost some mana, maybe. Who knows? Mm. Okay. I'm going to say you. Uh, I'm going to say you sense when people lose them. Yep. <laughs> You're sort of. It's like energy spills, like mm -hmm. leaks. Um, and you notice a bit of that from both Sh Shadow yep. and Harold and now Ainsley. Yep. So you'll notice like in this frantic happening, everyone's sort of like being pretty loose. Like, mm -hmm. you know. And everyone's still... This would be one of the first like magic fights that has ever happened. Full stop. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. So I would like to do this, this uh, Queen's Gambit redirect thing. I don't know, whatever. The Hail Mary play. Okay. What do I have to do? Uh, okay. Well, it was a level three spell, so you can roll whatever you want, use whatever destiny you want, but that's what you're working against. And that's what you're trying to rechannel. I'm going to say for basically the spell level that you cast, you're going to be able to oh! hit the lights. Um, yeah. The chandelier. Hell yeah. I'm going to call it two spells, a capture and a, a and trigger. Both at level three. Or whatever level you want to do. You can, you can... Well, I can't really Let do level some three. of it can hit you and channel a portion of it. You can choose to capture whatever you can capture, but you know it's going to it's going to do the same thing it did last time he diminished your capacity. Well, I guess I'll attempt level two because that's all I can. I can't really do more than that. Two successes. Two successes. Yay. A bit of it spills over, but you like. Not only are you dodging an attack from behind you from a phalan call that sort of catches you off guard and you know you're going to struggle to find your footing next, but you're very focused on that move where you catch a majority of this surge coming from behind that fucking smarmy portrait of <laughs> Ainsley looking all like regal with like, you know, feathers in front of like the phalan desert with like adorned in gold. And slam... Oh, no, you're going to have to make another... Damn, I thought you forget. Yeah, no. <laughs> Come on! In the direction of... Okay, so you lose one mana. Nope, I'm using my you're destiny using to destiny. hold my mind. Okay. It's the only thing I've got. I'm already debuffed, so... Okay. That's it. You feel like this draining of your faculties, like... Like being drunk, it's not like, you know, it doesn't hurt, but you're, you're feeling a bit sloppy. Mm -hmm. Um mainly in your thinking you feel slow thinking mm -hmm. um but just a little bit though just a little bit one d6 from reflex or intelligence based checks mm -hmm. and minus one to combat minus one to combat okay intelligence or reflex yep. you know but you put the the bulk of it on um russell sorry not russell he's not here um <laughs> on harold yep and he looks shocked, like he's obviously just thrown brick and you see him just like his eyes start to like get heavy and he's starting to stumble a little bit. Okay. Meanwhile, Medela is kicking and screaming and fighting against Mish and she's not like anticipating a fight from <laughs> Medela, but she gets a bite on the arm and like in sort of shock yeah, go let's go. <laughs> and she like drops through her arms and lands on the ground and starts to run towards the group. Oh. Okay, uh, so Mish is just sort of in that scramble. Brick. Did you technically, you declared, you put the thing there. Are you doing a combat thing? I no, you declared. I just got impaled. Yeah, okay. 
Cool. All right, good good choice. Um, and then the watchers, they're all like, there's some drawn swords and they're like, and they sort of start to, to run out into the fray. Most of them, like a couple of them, I think they're smart enough to know that if all of them flooded, that it's too many cooks in the kitchen and there's like, how many, six of these people? Seven. Please, for the love well, of Well, one, there's one in it with a bag over his head. So, oh no, they pull the bag yeah, off yeah. his head. They pull the bag off his head. Um, yeah, and they're like, right, there's man. seven of them, but like seven people can't like effectively attack one person. So a couple of them- You've watched too many movies. <laughs> don't don't all stand around in a fucking circle and wait your turn. No, they're not. Mop waiting. him from seven <laughs> sides and he won't be able to defend you okay, all. Okay, I'll give you, I'll tell you what. He's gonna, in front of a I'll, door. He's probably, he's I'll probably destiny half this. I'm just being- I'll just destiny being this. Because okay. de you did give a command. Yeah, okay. It's so going to be like awful. No? 15. 15. Okay. No. One person, just because they're near a, a guard who's drawn their sword and is starting to mm -hmm. fight against them, has is held back. Six uh, start flooding through the room, just skipping everyone and going straight for uh, the shadow figure. Nice. Wonderful. Okay. Can we all roll off again? Or? Oh, no, who's no, now we well, just... now we know our turn order. Okay. But it is in this moment that there is a crash and in the distance, you feel the shaking, the building starts shaking, rumbling okay. fairly violently and it's not stopping. And it's at this moment, I am going to say a couple of things happen. <clears throat> Ooh. Let's start off with the chandelier. Hey, lucky me, woo! Hey, you're <laughs> under the table. That's the best place to be. Yeah, exactly. Destiny roll, <laughs> hey. 17. Okay. Could be worse. There's a bit of that's swinging. That's pretty, it's pretty not, good. It's could pretty fall on someone we don't like. 17 is good, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I'm gonna say, it's not near the chair and Brick and Delvin are the chair and Catalina's under the table. I would say Devlin's on the other side. I'm going to say you guys are actually in the clear for this one. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. Um, I'm going to give Hawks a defensive roll uh, and the Shadow a defensive roll. Medela hasn't made it to no, us yet. No, no, she's just started. So she just yeah, got cool. out. Cool, cool. So she's starting to run. Oh, this is an unexpected dance. Just quietly, Jazza can't hear me when I talk like this. <laughs> I'm already severely weakened. Oh. <clears throat> mm hmm Yep. 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 I'm now yep. pretty useless in combat. Yep. Neg two dice. So like as average as a like a town guard, <coughs> maybe. So yeah. what? Seven dice. Like a town guard. Okay. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Chandelier falls. This is a check for the shadow person. In fact, oh, yeah, no, this will just be a reflective check. What would you do? Unarmed combat? For what? Basically a reflective, like, jump out of the way. Acrobatics. I guess you do, yeah, the acrobat. Okay, so, yeah. all right. Something he's probably very good at. <laughs> all right. I'm going to say challenge level three. Okay. E. Easily, sort of like actually kind of nonchalant, just sort of ducks out of the way. Does he move from like a little bit away from the portrait? It's like, uh, we'll probably back him more towards it because the chandelier, <sighs> the space it takes. <laughs> right. um, okay, so that's the shadow. <clears throat> um, and then we have. Uh, Statues are hard to read. Hawks. Same check. I hope rocks aren't falling because that usually leads to something bad for parties. Okay. Okay. Gets clocked on the on the shoulder mm -hmm. uh, as he jumps out of the way, and I'm going to say he'll be staggered in the next round, sort of thrown off his feet. Who's this one? Sorry. Hawks. Hawks. Okay. Um, the shaking doesn't stop, but the music has to continue. So, <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to enter the next round. Mm -hmm. The building is now shaking. Great. Everyone gets a minus one, but because that makes math stupid, everyone's rolls are the same. But just pr presume everyone's a bit sloppier 
Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Everyone is equally diminished. Every, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Sure, so there's sure, no sure. point making So you're performing it lower than you are, but comparative to the other people. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. It, cool. It balances Everyone's out. equally shitter. So that's fine. <laughs> My turn. We'll just roll the same. Declarations. Great. First. I want to load that crossbow, set it on fire, and aim for that painting. Okay. Mm hmm. Go for it. Oh, well, that, okay, so that's your declaration. That is You're my just declaration. aiming straight through it. Yep. There is a figure standing that, in front of it. Good luck, buddy. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, the watchers. I'm going to say they reach into the middle and start surrounding this shadow figure who just sort of like is looking around and they're all charging in, ready to attack, and they'll all get their roll. Okay. <laughs> He's in so much trouble. Brick. This system is ruthless. Yeah. It is. <laughs> <laughs> At least half of them are going to be flanking for sure, right? Yeah. This is a very epic moment. Brick's just thinking a lot about it. Let's have it. Give Ainsley the hot potato, potato Brick. <laughs> you hear some shrieks in the background. Ah. Is the floor cracking? I just want to confirm, that. Delvin is currently fighting Harold. Uh, Delvin is currently pulling his arm out of the chair and now he's fighting who he wants to fight. So in this moment, you notice Harold is like extra like woozy. Um, Delvin looks a little woozy. There was some sort of happen. I'm going to say at this point, people aren't like masking their magic. They're being pretty aggressive with it. So you're seeing like these Harry pulses. Potter fight. Through, yeah, we got to <laughs> gotta get that shit happening. If we're going to get fan art, um, it's got to have pulse, pulses. Was Mish also going after Delvin? Mish is starting to... Uh, Who is this Mish a is abandoning protecting Medela at this point at, and she's going to come into the... I'm not going to declare because it's not bloody Mish's turn. It's your turn. Yes, I know. What that. is your declaration, Brick? I'm trying to understand the situation. Well, you can't like, understand the whole situation because <laughs> you're declaring it earlier because you're slower. So I just from declare. The, the previous round, Okay. I'm pretty sure there was a right. Fallen Cool going for Delvin. Hox is a little yes. knocked out of the Hox way and is stumbling. And just got do, hit I by have, rock. do I have flanking on Hox if Hox is going for Delvin? I, he's staggered. I okay. wouldn't give you flanking. So I'm not on the side. Now, because you're at the chair, he's facing both of us because I'm at the chair too. Yeah. Good. I'm worried that Brick will be waiting for his moment, standing in the rubble of this building with everyone dead, like, when is the right <laughs> time to have <laughs> my dramatic <laughs> moment? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go for... I'll go for Hox. Hawk. Okay. Hawk. Don't kill him. Hawks. Turn them! Turn them, Brick! Say something inspiring! <laughs> You're going to attack Hox. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's your declaration. We'll roll for that later. Misha's turn. She shows up and sees you going for Hox and she goes for you. Uh -oh. She is going at you. Wasn't she at the other end of the room? She was... She ran Medela She the was back running door. back to chase Medela, who was entering, coming closer to the group. So now she's near enough that she'll be able to... Yeah, seeing she this happen... In that turn. This is like a... A small co I don't think you understand. Like, most of this is happening within double the space of this room in terms of where people were situated. I have a feeling we all so, pictured, like, well, the, the, throne, the first time like we were a in throne this, room with a giant yeah, well, table. We but it's not, it's the art it's like room. Big and grand and art yeah, but like, everywhere. It's, I did say it's a table this size. Yeah, I just, the room. The room. How far said, away do you think people were seated the from the table? Well, it's like a couple of meters away. At the back of the room. There was a she door. will arrive to you in this Okay, turn. whatever. I'm still going to do my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't okay. It, that is her declaration. Delvin, what is yours? We've got to turn them. We can't fight them. Yeah. Okay. So he's got a plan. He's got a plan. Okay. You're staggered. And were no. you staggered? Who was oh, staggered? No, I did get staggered. I got staggered this turn. Yep. So and you have minus with Hox one. now, well, I've got minus one to all my reflexes intelligence. I'm injured, so I have minus one to everything including combat, uh, and I'm staggered. So I have negative four uh, to a lot of, to combat, negative four to combat, negative two to intelligence and reflexes, and negative one to strength. <laughs> okay, so Harold is reeling yeah. and presumably weakened. Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, Hox is now getting attacked. So yep. I'm going to be Lithe. And the box with the scepter was next to the chair, right? That's where he got placed. Once he got inspected, they just put it... It's in. Uh, on the table. Yeah. I'm going to have to roll a destiny okay. to see what happens when the chandelier falls as oh, far as sure, that yeah. goes. Okay. I'm going to say it's on the edge of the table and the table's sort of broken and tilted, uh, but it's okay. And you're safe underneath it, Kat. Yay. Is it too heavy for me to grab? No, I'd say you'd be able to pick it up. I'm going to grab the chest and just like run towards, like grab it and head towards the Ainsley portrait. Okay. I hope I don't hit you. <clears throat> well, I'm going... Yeah, yeah, true, it's true, fine. true, true, true. It's fine. I'm going to, and if any combat happens, I'm dodging and weaving. I'm not, I'm defending rather than trying to fight because Delvin is trying to be like, Brick is causing chaos and confusion. Chandelier just fell and earthquake happened. There's yeah. seven dudes fighting that guy. If now is my chance to slip in if this is and the, fucking yeah. get to Ainsley, it's now mm. or never. So I'm just going for that. Bolting. Yep. All right. And you spend the whole round at yep. charging. <clears throat> Grab, run. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, I should have mentally declared Ainsley first because he is technically the slowest, but he's mm -hmm. also concealed. So I hadn't, but I'll, I'll do, I'll do that. I'm before curious the as to how happen. he's perceiving everything. And I, this will be interesting after the fact. <clears throat> okay. It's obviously magic, but I'm, I'm mm. like, I wonder if there was a way that we could have shut that off. So Hawks is going to react to Brick's attack with shock and try and steady himself but he's like wobbly and he's not affecting he's not expecting to be attacked by the the fa yeah. uh, any failing call slave so he's going to defend himself but he's not in a great place um okay harold Ooh. shrieks <laughs> no as he sees you charge exactly to the portrait and attempts to throw you sideways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meanwhile, Shadow, surrounded by a huge, quite a group of people, in, uh, engages in combat against them. Ooh, okay. Would you like me to tell you how this works? Okay. Well, there's... I will. I will pin you to the rule book. <laughs> please, no, please do. I want you to. I do want you to. Except that a lot of this stuff is you actually going to be powers. magic. Of course, affected by magic stuff. So, pin me to the rule book. There will be times where we're like, "Yep, I get Just it." I'll tweak of, it. There will be other times rolls. where I'm like, "Nah, sorry." Well, in terms of his dice rolls, rolls, which you can modify with magic spells and stuff, is. If he wants to deal damage to multiple people, it's negative two to his dice pool for every additional one he wants to get victory levels against, but his dice roll yep. stands defensively cool. against all I would of be them. delighted if you help me do the maths when I make the roll. Okay. That would be great. And in fact, I'd, I'd be happy to do that whole group right now. Mm -hmm. um, I am just looking for my bloody notes because I have to make a magic roll first. Okay. Fail, 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 fail. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make a cast a spell. Mm -hmm. Double Ooh. fail. And you know to add insult in, to injury, can I counter that? Yep. <gasps> oh. What are you, what's your intention here? To just stop it. To just dispel whatever he's casting. Okay, I want you to first identify it. So there's going to be two spells. Don't I already have? You, you have a loose connection, okay. but this is different. You need to know what they're casting, and then you need to know. This is rude. What's the challenge <laughs> level to detect two. it? To detect it. To detect it with... Because it's two to, to, to counter it, right? <sighs> I've spent all my destiny to hold on to my mana. Oh, I'll give you one. To, to challenge detect. level one to detect. Okay. Two to counter. Oh. Okay. You got it. What's he casting? The you cheeky sense, little Bimson. You sense this weird 
it's like un, unlike any magic you've sensed before it's like things were all it's like it's almost like a de- it's this feeling of destiny like things will always happen in a certain way and it's like this feeling of guidance like fortune is moving the motion in exactly where it is meant to be so you're sensing this sort of universal guidance sort of accumulate as they're preparing to engage with multiple people mm-hmm. and it and somehow it's not like they know that they're going to be acting in a certain way like it's not it's not like this cognitive way to react it's just this magical way that things are going to fall into place or out of place so you knowing that can prevent that yep from and I would <gasps> like to. Okay, challenge level two. Got one. Okay, you burn a mana. I'm now down a mana. Okay. And and I would like to whip uh, to him and just quip and say, looks ran out as I'm running. Okay. And Ooh, like... I feel the magic. <laughs> yeah. As they're like preparing to fight and you saw like this weird like s- graceful confidence... And as you're running past, there's like this, like, what's happening feeling as then they engage in combat. So now let's do that combat roll, which won't be affected by the magic spell. Because okay. you, you burn a mana, but you use two. Yep. So and it's cancelled. It's cancelled out. Come you, on, out watchers. Whoa, clever cookie. I've, I've <laughs> planned, plotted, and now pretty much spent everything. Hey, look, you spend, you got to get stuff for what hey, you spend. It's, it's only fair. So this is, I'm glad he's rolled poor on his mana. The fact that he's fluff out of mana now means like, all right. So what's his combat roll? Okay. Who's this? Is this dude. Shadow. Yep. Yep. What's he wielding? How many people is he fighting? Six. Seven. Six. One got distracted, right? Oh, six. Yep. Cool. Hang on a second. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 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 Okay. What's his combat roll? Eight. <laughs> you can only defend against four people. No. Uh, okay. Yeah. So he can only actually make defensive rolls against four of them, which just means three get free attacks with okay. no roll. All right. Cool. Let's do and it. And probably the three that are flanking. Oh well, that's your discretion. Well, I'm, I'm, they, they've got all got the same stats. I also feel like so. if he's against the wall yeah, but if flanking. they're flanking him, they get the plus four. Dice. Oh, okay. Uh, there are seven people. No, six. 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 Okay, I'll so let. Two of I'll them. let. I feel like he couldn't get flanked if his back's against the wall. No, he's surrounded. And he could yeah, I'm going to give two wall. flanking, and the rest are sort of okay. Cornering. So him. the way this works is, if he only wants to deal lethal injuries to one person, he gets his full combat roll. For anyone extra that he wants to hurt. He has to sub neg two dice. However, given the circumstances, trying to kill them one by one is the more efficient way of doing it. Mm. That's by the rules. Mm-hmm. It's just very. It's to prevent one. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, to prevent yeah. one clutch roll, and then you just like. I have, and six dudes. Yeah, hundred percent. I have yeah. no problem with that. Um, it'll have to be aggressive combat uh, to kill one dude. That's his aim. And then defend against the other. So that if he keeps the eight dice, he can def- use the eight dice as his defense against everyone he can defend against. Okay. Otherwise, he'd be taking neg dice, but then he could potentially injure multiple people. I'll just let you help me. Okay. With that. So roll eight dice. So boom. One, two, three. three. Ooh, that's not good. So now, okay. There are four people who are rolling against three dice yeah. with their just their regular combat roll. Yep. And two against zero. Yeah. Okay. This is all of their rolls. Okay. So. Uh, so Four people yep. rolling against the regular roll, which actually lose. One of them loses. One of them would get. Oh, so you're rolling more individually. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but they can only actively. You can only hurt one. one, but he can pick the worst one of the four. So okay. one, that's a that's parity. Two. That's a level one success against. Yep. And then next one is a level one success. So he could potentially that's stagger. Three. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's only a meat. Oh, that's a meat. That's an yeah, equal. sorry. Okay. Yeah. So um, they got one victory against and one of them one and victory. one got one against So you can injure or stagger that one dude. Stagger. Okay. And then the two guys behind get Fra- flanked attacks. Flanked attacks yep. against nothing. Yeah. 
So One, they get two, five three, successes. Five. five. I love, I love that you got that line in there. Can you pass me that dice? It's a five. You can roll it. Uh, you no, roll I'll, it I'll let it. I'll let it stand. One, two, three, four. So this is going to divert what I do though next turn though, hmm. as he dies. With that said, so he's going to completely. <laughs> they were like change standing next turn. super confident and like ready to just do this, and all of a sudden the switch isn't flicking, and then it's just like, oh shit, it's just me on six people, and it's turns to a fairly desperate fight very quickly and then skewer, skewer in the back from two of them. All right. So Delvin's next turn is going to completely change. We'll get that in a moment. Okay. <clears throat> next turn. You want to find out who it is? No. You? No? I'm getting, I have to, I'm going to divert and shove the scepter into him. We oh. were tasked to get the magic yeah. of Ainsley yeah. or this guy, and he's dying. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, need yeah. to yeah. siphon the magic yeah. into the scepter to fulfill our contract with the children of Amar. Clever cookie. Yeah. I can't, like, look, I can't guarantee everything, but I've got to try and hedge bets there. Okay. Good for me. So, <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> I haven't played role playing games for like 15 years. Now, Harold. Do not obsess over them. <laughs> bloody Harold is trying to throw you. Yes, he is. Okay. And okay, that was uh, it. Burns a manor. <laughs> Should I counter it? But I mean, if you want to, but you know, the risk is risky. So you feel uh, you you can <laughs> counter it. It's then risky. I might have. I, do you know what? I, I, I don't would want be to. tempted. Gonna, to, uh, I was going to say it's like you you'd have to be aware of a bloody yeah, nah, lot. I'm going to let it. I'm going to let he. Yeah, I wouldn't anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm focused. So you on like sort of stop to like. Yep. To do that kerfuffle, and you also stop because you see all this happening, and then get skewered. You get shoved to the side. I'm going to give you a an athletics roll, challenge of three. That's what you had, wasn't it? it was challenge of three, four. The shove, the invisible shove. Six. Yours was six, but they used two. Yes. And and, okay, the, cool. and the bazooba by was boosting him. Shadow yeah, was boosting. Okay, him. cool. Yeah. Athletics roll, challenge of three. Oh. Only two. Uh yeah. Oh, because you're might you're injured. Yeah. I I think I've gotten away. I was gonna I could say I could argue for endurance to withstand it, but I've gotten away with enough. No successes. Yeah. Okay. No successes. Okay. You feel this force like in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> this shove, like just sideways, out of nowhere. I'm going to ooh, destiny roll to sort of see yep. how your handling of the chest goes. Do you want to make the roll, sir? No. So it comes you from you. Curse right. me. 18. Bless right. me. By well, the skin of your teeth, the lid flaps open. You scrape along the ground a couple of meters, but you, you can clamber up without being severely injured. It was basically to throw you away and from I'm the portrait. And I'm now completely deflected from the portrait. Yeah. Which is weirdly fortuitous, but he doesn't know that. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's Harold's turn. Hawks is fierce. She was made to be really pissed off. Mish. And Mish. Mish, sorry, thank you, yeah. Oh no, Hawks is going first then. Who huh. is staggered for this? Hawks is staggered, so Hawks is gonna have a pretty shitty roll. So now Hawks Hawks is defending. This is very much a uh, like he, he he's pretty shocked actually. So he doesn't actually he doesn't look like he's understanding much of what's he, going he on. Right pushing now. him down. Yeah, he's That's not okay. <laughs> it's a bit rude. I am in shock, I have to say. You did about, exceptionally well. Yeah, no, it, it, you rolled well. I've rolled well, but it's more, it's games like Cogent and games like Wad where you can be the most badass mm. motherfucker and when you're surrounded, combat is just dead. Yeah, what, and, it, and it's like, so realistic. Yeah. <laughs> when it was game of if season, you don't have your special magical things that makes you invincible in that moment, yeah. you're going to be a fucking kebab. Like, you're going to be shish kebab. You know when Serio Pharrell in Game of Thrones gets killed, but he's like the best swordsman, yeah. but he's like Spoiler. gets surrounded. Yeah, all, it takes is, all it takes I'm is kidding, the, that he's moment. 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Hawks staggered and injured. Okay, this is and, combat. Oh, yeah, Hawks. Yep. Yep. One, two, three. three. All right. Brick. I am going to attack him with the haft of my weapon. Okay. I'm going to do Hox and Mish and Brick all at once because yep. this is like a cluster. And I'm going to use a destiny point. Okay. So you're advantaging your attack? Yep. 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Ultimate victory. Eight. 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 Oh, yeah. You would get plus four against Hox, though. Separately. You were flanking him, right? No, oh, no, you weren't flanking him. No, not Hux. flanking. He was staggered. Yep, sorry. Yeah. My mistake. Okay, so you have a victory level of... Four. Six. Okay, so Three, you can five, basically choose... Five. To do, no, that is eight. Choose what to do in this moment, but I'm not going to let you right. Yeah. Oof. That's eight. Do you yeah. know what? I'm going to let you tell what your intention is. If you're going for lethal, or if you're going for, um, sort of disarming or something specific, I'm not going to let it happen yet because technically Mish is faster. But I want you to say what your intention is. I would like to trip him, drop my weapon, and yank the shackle off his neck. Oh, I love that. Okay. Okay. And you got a five victory level, so you can basically turn it. Can... Yeah, you get that. Okay. <laughs> Mish is charging. Oh, I love that. Yay. Go for it. Reacting. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to say like... Mish is stopped in her tracks because it's clear that you're not killing Hawks. You're obviously not killing Hawks. Yeah, well, I turned my weapon around here and hit him with a stick, not a blade. So she's come right up behind you and, like, poised, but shouts, What is the meaning of this? What is wrong with you? You are broken! <laughs> we are all broken. That is what I have learned. We should be free to choose who to serve, who we wish to serve. We are free to do nothing, she says. And that is why we are broken. By freeing ourselves, maybe we can start to be fixed. I'm going to just say to Catalina, this is just like lots of emotions coming from behind you I'm just gonna say mm. that from mm. two people okay we'll get to you in a moment mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. that is that moment done now we're actually on to he gets the shack yeah that, shackles that shackle got shackle ripped is off, off okay. torn off yeah right. okay can i would it be too much to turn around and take hers off as well uh i think in this round yes yeah okay yeah so are we on you're to still wearing yours i am yeah okay delvin's turn so this is that moment. We're oh, just so the moving turn? across and turn. I'm just going, trying to go chronologically. But I clustered them. So I'm grabbing up the scepter and running off to the shadowy figure who has two swords through his back yep. to basically take his juice with okay. the stick. You grab the scepter stick. Yeah. Do I reach him? Am I just declaring? Hmm... Your turn was to run. You use that magic action. Yeah, I'm going to say I'm you can use it. up off the ground. Yeah, you can. Your round is basically like because you, you kind of got your move. Yeah, I'm happy. So it's like you're approaching. Like you're going to get there and you can do I'm something. I'm thinking next, next round. turn's declaration. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But cool. that's yeah. So you're that's just heading turn. straight there. You're changing your path, Catalina. Now I'm going to, if you want to, I'm going to give you the same offer, but this time, two, challenge level two can affect two people. Then you have to break your thing. It's too important. Catalina stops what she's doing and pulls out her harp. No! And clutches it to her chest. And she thinks of her father and knows that if he's safe, that's all that matters. And she plays one last time. I'm going to take over the narrative steering wheel at this point and I'm not going to get you to roll anything. Sure. You start playing with your harp. It's like there's something, that feeling that you couldn't quite capture that morning, there's something there and it's stronger than ever before, especially where it was empty. So you're doing your heart thing with the intention of like, okay, you're trying to reach hard or do something like that, right? And it's not there connected to you, but it's there. There's something there. And it's like begging to be freed. It's like trying to, to get out. It needs to do what you want it to do. You sense it. And you start playing, but it's not the playing that's doing anything. There's actually 
a small stone in the head of the harp. That's always been there. There's always been a few little old weird things about this quirky old harp that you sense immediately. This is this is the heart of this harp. This is the, this is where this is coming from. And you, with your own emotions, call out to it, knowing you need you need the outside help. You you can't do this on your own. And gently, the exterior of this old dusty stone breaks away and a strange glowing creature starts to climb out and unfurls like a glowing butterfly. It's like a magenta with different hues of the rainbow that sort of unfolds. And it's like you're looking at a friend you've never met, but you've always known. It starts fluttering and flying around you. And you <clears throat> feel this direct connection to it. Like it's like it's a singing song partner you've always practiced with. Mm. And you feel its magic through your will, this connection you have with it. Do what you're asking it to do. Reach out to the hearts of these failing cool and it's brimming and bursting and you hear these enraged screams from above the table outside of your view you've been doing this all blind you've been feeling these emotions and it's all come to a head and it's all burst out and this little purple butterfly is sort of fluttering around you pieces of shattered dusty glass on the floor of your harp, which is perfectly working, but a perfectly ordinary looking harp. Meanwhile, the entire building continues to shake and the ground of the building is cracking. But not near you guys. That's actually towards the entrance, near the door. And the side of the tower... And this earthquake has been sort of going through fluctuations, sort of ebbed and flowed, and it builds up more. And these towers have never been built to withstand this sort of event, this sort of force. And the building starts to crumble away at the front. The entire dining hall and even the entryway that you guys come in has cracked and is starting to fall from the building. You're closer to sort of the core of this large tower. So for the time being, you might be on safe ground, but it's not looking great. <laughs> but... Uh, the telescope! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll a destiny. Uh, this is just for basically how things are crumbling in terms of what you could perceive. Okay. Nine. So not much looks all that different. Uh, and the earthquake is still happening. I think we're on to the next round. Okay. <laughs> Good Lord. Ha! <laughs> now! <laughs> Where we were, declarations. Catalina, you mm, go first. Ainsley okay. goes first, doesn't he? Ainsley goes uh, first. Yeah. Technically, Ainsley didn't go before. His time. Mm, that's a good point. Everything is going to shit. Mm, my house. <laughs> yeah, no. I've made Ains Ainsley move. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you happy? Yep. Um, I'm going to compose myself um, and realise the situation that we're still in. Um, has Med Medela's... Who do you know who she's running? Can I perceive who she's running towards? Is she going go to go You're going to have to... You're going to have to look. I don't think you're going to be able to sense it from emotions okay. at this point. It's messy and you don't actually have that manner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. No, that's cool. I'm going to do what I was going to do originally. Pull out that crossbow again, fire it and hit that painting. Okay. Yep. Cool. That's your, that's that your move. That's what I want to do. Yep. Okay. Next declaration. The Watchers, they're all standing there with their swords through this person. They actually look at you. It's like, all right, what next, boss? Can I like free action? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, do I sense Ainsley like retreating? Like a bit of movement at least? Because oh, I, I definitely a... had him. Do you sense him moving? Like his magic. Because I, I made like... I'm just going to say you don't sense active magic. That's all I can give you. Okay. You have to sort of look for it and it might cost you to look for it. Okay. Um, do I, just quickly scanning the room, do I, because I'm, I'm heading to the guy, I'm doing what I'm doing, but do I get the sense that this situation is coming to a head with the Phelan call? You see this happening, yeah. You see like, in fact, everyone is aware at this point. This is unlike any sight anyone in the land of Sunder has seen for a long time. Two sh Phelan call. Stan, Hox and Mish, and screaming, tear their, um, Is it Mish tears hers off? Pardon? Mish tears hers off. Yes, they both do. They well, both I tear them off. I took his but actually, and this is like, this is sort of outside your control now, because you were finding specific things and channeling mm -hmm. all that now, but you're not really doing that anymore. Yep, yep. And they run to each other and embrace each other. And start snogging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not okay. It's well. like total liberation of like, you just, yeah. there, there's a passion. It's not like, okay, this is how they spend their round. But they're finally but it's like, able there's to this moment. Yeah. 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 Every battle scene this needs is, a romantic kiss in the middle. Oh, 100%. Yeah. And it's Hox and Mish. They have, <laughs> they've spent their life desperate to feel Embrace things for each other, other, but they haven't Aww. been allowed. So they've Aww, been forcibly babies. bred with each yeah, other. Yeah, it's fucked. Oh, oh. It kind of does take the romance out. Yeah, it's of gross. People poking you. Yeah. Anyway, Wait, this is a very <laughs> dire situation. So, um, I say to the to the people who are with me, because that's what you originally asked the problem. They, I should say, as they embrace, like you sense, like this, like this grasp Ooh. on your arm, like of, of oh. brotherhood, like oh. a, of, okay. a, <laughs> of an endearing, yeah. like yeah. I don't know what this is, but I feel alive, sort of feeling, yeah. like there's. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be the supportive older brother in this relationship and give them both a solid like yep. thump on the back. And I would imagine you've never seen an active memory for Phelan Call ever express like this. Yeah. So this I imagine would be quite a quite an overwhelming emotional experience for Brick. Yeah. Cool. All right, Delvin. Uh so I'm gonna charge up to this guy. Mm-hmm. I have a few things to do. One of them is to say to the watchers, because um, they asked for an order. Um, yeah. I say, this building's crumbling. Untoy that kid, take whatever wealth you can carry, and we'll meet up outside. Kill anyone who resists. Um, that's my issue to them, my order to them. And then I'm going to, uh, We'll, and then finishing that, we'll have time to pick over the rubble when we've uh, when I've dealt with Ainsley. And then uh, I go to the guy, get the scepter. I don't really know how the fuck it works. Um, so from instructions, you just know it's got to be pointed basically close to them and at their core when they die. At the moment of death. I just look at him and go, as he's bleeding out with two swords through him. Always wanted a mace. And then I just swing it down <laughs> into his fucking head. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Because it, it, it's like a full steel, like it's king a giant thing. ornate, it's a w w ornamental weapon. Okay, so but not in a way can... that will break it, but I definitely no, yeah, bonce yeah. him with it. Definitely bonce it. Oh, um, I want to crack the egg and catch the little wispy soul that comes yeah, out. Cool. I don't know. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, I'll give you that free round because they're a uh, easy target. <laughs> In fact, let's play this out because you, I think you got this one. Um, how do you, you're finishing him off with the scepter? Well, he's basically dying, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. No, you know what? The scepter's a funny gag, but I rip his mask off. Okay. You I've got to do, do that. You can still do it yeah. afterwards. You rip her mask off. Oh. Oh. It's Elise. And you see Elise, who was the one who showed Medela to her room on the day that you first met with Ainsley. And the Barrowan girl, the friendly young girl. As soon, <laughs> as soon as I see her face, the look of like, just complete like, 
oh, that makes it so much fucking easier. And then I just smash her head in with the fucking scepter. <laughs> because in that moment, yeah. Delvin just sees a woman who lied and provided false comfort to an innocent girl and betrayed her in the most intimate ways by being that caregiver who leads her into the jaws of a fucking lion. And that's just like, you are beneath any redemption and just bang. And barely holding on to her life already. Mm. You don't even need to roll for it. Smashes right into her skull. And then as you hold it, to her chest, you feel this pulse of energy, which was drained from her as she had used all mm. of this magic up. But you feel this like whooshing, like this pulse, and it this scepter lights up and glows, flashes white, and almost blinds you as it pulls in something that it traps within it, and the trigger is done. I just remembered something really important. So I'm going to I'm going to point at the watches that are right next to me like shoulder and be like that 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 at all the magic items I spotted on the wall there were three on the east <laughs> uh, there were three on the left wall the coldish pick which they probably can't carry uh, they're the they yeah they're the three on the left wall and the coldish pick but they're what I point at whether they can get them on a, yeah. get them as in try and get them down yeah they okay. the value I say like they're the value that 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 Okay. Okay. Oof. Oh Good my job. god. I have Very I told cool you, move, yeah. My one Love talent it. in life is remembering things from role playing games. <laughs> Oof. And as they climb out to the walls and they go exactly to where you point, one of them pulls down a painting mm. that reveals a recess in the wall and a large ballista style like weapon has just finished turning on cranks and is pointing directly at the group of Phelan Call. Good thing I did that. One of the watches is directly in front of it. Harold for his turn. <laughs> Wait, no, he's got nothing left. He's cooked. He, he tries to. But he's stupid. He might try it. <laughs> he's dumb. Oh, shit. <laughs> he's got the dum-dum. He is a dum-dum. He might try it. <laughs> <laughs> I love Rob. I love that. <laughs> but he's a dum-dum. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he holds his arm out and he's just like screaming. Um, and a quill that he's holding in his hand that has been holding the whole time and had taken some notes with or whatever shatters with like a mist of lost energy that sort of happens and and nothing really occurs i'd say you feel like a, a gentle restraint um but then nothing really happens but i'm gonna say this action was pre-prepared mm -hmm. the crossbow yeah do we get enough to just shout like jump or something so they get like a chance to maybe dodge it a little bit? Or is it too well, clutch? To like is perception. it like literally the it comes down and I have to put this down to one Destiny. dice. Yep. No, I went, gave everything. At they, least they got their snog. It's pointing at brick. Oh, okay. Uh, Destiny, please uh, do well. 11. Ah, it tells you nothing. It doesn't tell me anything. Shall I re-roll? No. Well, it maybe it tells you with a 50-50 right. that it's neither positive nor <laughs> yeah. negative. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let this come down to a combat roll, and I'm going to have to just decide what the combat roll is. I, I can tell, tell you, what, you if tell you, you want. What. It's in the rule book. Yeah, okay, thank you. Let's do that. That is the wise thing to do. Okay, so you're looking for you're looking for an arbalist, which is going to be a heavy, we we'll call it a heavy ballistic weapon. It's 66 it. extra dice yeah. on whatever the base roll. But I'm sorry, it's the closest analog to a fucking ballista pointed at you. Um, Grab the painting. I want you to live, but I also want you to know that plus 66 is, is the weapon modifier for a heavy ballistic weapon. I don't know what the base roll would be, but the okay. weapon is plus six dice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I got... feel like the base roll would be whoever's firing its stats, but if it's... Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, like, 
they need to have. If this is Ainsley and he twirls his moustache, he's like, well, and well, runs to if, another if ballista. If this person has any combat die. proficiencies, is my main question, that are going to affect this. Define well, combat proficiency. Like, that, well, it comes in many forms, and this, you know. Oh, I have a proficiency in heavy ballistic weapons. <laughs> yeah, technically. <laughs> Think about how the uh, Collier Thrust was constructed to his exact specifications. This is someone who knows good engineering. So it's fine, Rob. You have one armor and one strength. If you got in hand to hand combat, yeah, he's screwed. But he doesn't get it. It is Ainsley. He's twirling his mustache behind the wall. Yeah, you definitely see him like standing behind. (laughs) Yeah, he totally is. He's it's Ainsley. He's such a villain. He's behind it a is secret wall shooting brick with a ballista. <laughs> Can you twirl your moustache any harder? Um, is there still a dude in front of it, though? A one of the yeah, watchers? There is. Oh, yeah, there is. Well, at least he'll take the hit. Uh, I don't I guess think. He'll, he'll, he might soften it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I'll take that. It's fine. Roll this bad boy. Yeah, okay. Oh, my God. Should I, should I change my crossbow? Oh, I still haven't declared. Just saying. Oh, yeah, we still... It's just like round, what, three? You're going to hate me? Mm-hmm. He's a Graydon. He's going to spend a destiny point to get an advantage. Good oh. Roll like crap. Roll like crap. Ooh. One. That three because of the destiny. Nine. Nine. That was nine successes. You can do it. You can do it, Rob. Do you have de- you have destiny? You have destiny. You can do your own advantage. You have like eleven combat dice, don't you? How many do you have? Ten? Nine. I have a question. Yep. Can I use the shackle that I took off what's his name's neck as a shield? No. No. It's a bit nah. It's metal. It's a, I mean, come on. You are wearing a breastplate. I mean, that won't. It's a freaking bullet. It'll, it'll still reduce it. Count. Yeah, yeah. And you have one strength. And a dude. <sighs> All right. I believe Do I do my normal combat roll and try and not, deflect it or something? It's, with... it's an unarmed combat roll. Oh, unarmed then he's combat. dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Unarmed combat. Yeah, I'm fucked. It's fine. You can... I'm going to let, before you roll... I don't want to give him his combat roll. I'm going to... No, no, you get your combat roll. I'm going to let the... Uh, I'm going to let one of the bloody... Um, watches. Watches take a hit first. Aww. Condemned Did watcher. your Carter teach you anything about dodging... Dodging ballista <laughs> shots. <laughs> okay. There was nine successes. Yep. I'm going to say those no. two successes Seven. of the Watcher were basically how <laughs> he's polarized. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a ballista in the, he's a, he directly in front of him. Is, uh, what did you call it again? A Me fucking sure. arbalist. Arbalist, yeah. Oh. <laughs> he's like, he explodes, but it slows the giant fucking javelin Wait. thing. Um, at, so I'll reduce that from nine victory levels to seven. Rob, I gave him plus 66 dice as the designated asshole rules lawyer. So I am here to inform you that technically you get your full weapon combat roll to defend against range attacks if you're wielding a weapon. You always get your full combat roll oh, to okay. deflect ranged weapons. Cool. If you don't want him to do... No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So every time you shoot a bow on something, I'm you get happy, happy, to, right. happy to be well, helped with the rules. I'm going to destiny. Okay. Or advantage. Yeah. You can do it. Hmm. Four, five. And what was the pass? Hey. Six, and seven. Armor so strength. Two. Take one off for the armor. And you could use and another... Take death. one off for the strength. <gasps> yeah. Yeah! Ooh. <laughs> Actually, fuck it. I only take one off for the armor. You're gonna start to cop it. Okay, here's what happens. <clears throat> it shoots through the air, pulverizes someone in front of you, and rips in the air towards you. 
And as it's going straight at you, you hear this distant screaming, No, Brick! As Medela is clamoring over the throne and running towards you. And it literally slows down. The building, the fire had spilled out when the earthquake had shattered the front of the room. And the front half of the room is starting to burn with the open air and all of Iron Spire unfolding in front of you. There's actual fires in the city, as you can see. The earthquake is still causing rack and ruin. And literally, everything has slowed down. And you can see this tortured face as she's running at you to try and reach you before this thing, which she can't. And it's slowly moving towards you. I'm going to say your roll was successful. Like, obviously, you would have just taken one damage, but I'm actually, based on what's happening now, going to let you completely negate it. Because you can step to the side. Because you're not slowed. Who's behind me? Could be the other two. I'm going to say, is it, this is totally that moment from, like, X-Men... Oh, the silver man. Yeah, this is totally the silver dude thing where, like, you can look around. What do you want to observe? (laughs) Who's behind me? Harold, and he's pulling a dagger out. I wanted to milk him for its magic, but that's He's already done his turn. Dude, this is too freaking cool. Yeah, he's preparing for his next one. He's going to be a shish kebab. Do it. Just his leg. I want to milk him. Everything is moving in slow motion. Yeah, I'll um. As long as as long as I can be assured that if I step to the side and let it impale him, it's not going to hurt anyone else. You can basically take a little bit of a free action to arrange things very slightly to be exactly what you want them to be. It's not going to take a lot. You sort yeah. of can step to the okay. side and yank right. a sleeve. Make the two felons. Let's do it. Kiss. I'll, I'll, I'll nudge it so it's going to hit him. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to nudge it. But you not You just kill nudge him. him. I, want to, I, I want it to completely disable him, but not kill him. Like wing him and... Just like take off his foot or take off his leg at the knee. Oh, he took an arrow to I was an adventurer until I took an arrow and to the knee. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, literally, take, destroy his leg. It's my, my goal. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to gun it towards Ainsley because I still haven't declared. He gave you time. That's true. Yeah, you, you okay. got the time freeze. You just do the quicksilver, like, poke him in the right yeah. direction. Yeah, you, do, you line Squishy it all up. And as you start to run forward out of this sort of immediate vicinity, everything sort of white... Everything starts to sort of weirdly warp in a very cool audio-assisted fashion. That was was really cool. Thank you. Yeah, well done. And you uh, immediately, as you're you're charging forward straight to Ainsley, Mm -hmm. straight to the ballista. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Meanwhile, like all in a flash, um... This giant freaking spear straight through his leg and he flies a meter and a half, two meters back and gets pinned to the back wall. The javelin is like more than halfway through this stone wall and he's screaming in pain. Um, It's actually the part of the wall where like a meter above and two meters to the side is the giant... um, Failing pick. Coldish coldish pick. pick. (gasps) Does it fall down? It does not fall down. But you are charging an Ainsley. You are charging, and that is your turn. You won't arrive to him this turn. Okay. Next round of combat. Oh, I will say, actually, as you charge ahead, you pass Medela, who's sort of started to run up to where you were, and she collapses to the floor as everything sort of goes back to what it was. And you charge forward. I'm going to yell, save Medela as I'm running. Cool. To can we the get the room? Save Madeira. That's really hard to say while yelling. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. 
I want it. I like my. F I get a few brick words per episode. I like to <laughs> just wash them in. Okay. And I heard you charge. Okay. Next round. Mm -hmm. This destiny roll mm -hmm. is the building. Oh no. Let's see how this goes. Oh, it's getting worse. That was an eight after yeah. a nine. A good chunk of the front. I'm going to say up to the fireplace. The two chairs that were that were seated at. No one is really there, but it's right at the edge of where you are, Delvin. Starts to crack and collapse, and p pieces of it start okay. falling away one at a time. So this, the integrity of this, this building is rapidly deteriorating. <clears throat> There's lots of screams in the distance. Ooh, roll a perception check. Everyone. Everyone roll a perception check. Yay, no, included. Focused. Delvin doesn't notice. I'm foregoing my yeah, perception check. fair enough. Oh We're my nothing. God. Okay, no one notices Woo! anything. The throes of battle are very captivating. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Ainsley shits his pants and starts to run away because he sees like, <laughs> like he would have also seen like, and then yeah, like his right hand man just be skewered, and this huge beast just charging at him. Did he also see me bonce his other oh, right yeah. hand man? Well, mm, he was pretty focused Post at the time. Bonced? Post bonced. Okay, he probably would have glanced at and he's pelting it and you'll notice at this point especially with the way, the way the building is disintegrating it's a full hallway on the side of the room that seems to be stationed with different mechanisms and tools of meanness it's the villain hall the cool. hidden villain hallway so he's running up the opposite direction of where the building is falling apart which is also the direction of where that back door is <clears throat> okay watchers they're Doing what they're doing, or what were they doing again? They were stealing the relics I pointed out to them, and then getting so their to turn basically got that thing taken down. Yep, which was obviously not a winner, but I'm hoping that some of the other ones were winners for the magic items. Or maybe the there other were three magic good. items on the left wall. One of them was, was the, the coldish other. pick. Although there's the coldish pick and three magic items on the okay. left wall. One will have fallen down. Okay, it was on the left. The other was the painting of Ainsley that was hiding, concealing Ainsley. And there was probably things there that aided his perception yep. as well as diminished others. Um, and then the other was the mechanism. The, the crossbow. The crossbow. So there's bow. one magic item that they managed to get off the floor. And then the coldish pick. Off the pick floor. Would, would no, no, no. It so it's the three paintings and the coldish pick. That are magic. So there are two paintings that are now, we know exactly what they are. And then there's the coldish pick. And what, there were three <laughs> and the coldish pick. Yeah, three on the wall. One yeah. of them has fallen. Yep. And there's with nothing. half the building. Oh, it's gone. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. I thought you meant falling to the ground. And you get the sense that these were more about just like okay, masking. Okay, okay, okay. This is about concealing all the things that can be used. All right. Well, as I said, just grab wealth and get to safety was my orders to the watchers. Okay. And they're like, that's what we're best at. And yeah. they just start pilfering. Like cool. this room is like full of really valuable stuff. And one of them's like, oh, how did, how did we get down? <laughs> that's a great question that I don't have an answer for. But I'm busy. Yep. Figure, so figure it out. I bonked the purse. Oh, well, you that's just the watchers. Who's next? You're holding this. I don't this, want to take the uh, full. Yeah, okay. So if we're going through declarations, we're actually starting Maybe. with Catalina. Yay. I'm going to. Are you emerging out from under the table? I absolutely <laughs> freaking am. Um, I'm going to go for Medela and just go pick, make sure to get. What is Mikey doing? Is he far from his restraint? Oh, I did he, order one been, to. I did. Uh, wait, yeah, like I'm going to say the watchers ago, cut him out. I did tell one of them to go rescue him. Okay. Yeah, two turns ago. I'm going to sort of, yeah, go to Medela and sort of gesture to Mikey to come towards me. Like, try to basically, go, I'm going to try and grab both the kids and take them out. Yeah. And they, they, uh, Medela, I'm going to say, is unconscious. She's on the ground. And I'm absolutely picking her up. Okay. So and you not. pick up. Medela, and by that time, Mikey arrives to you and his like sleeves are rolled up and he starts to help get her up and Great. tries to help carry her. Cool. All right. And then leaving is the next objective. Well, yeah, well that's... Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's your turn is yes. basically figuring out a direction. Yeah. Um, the watchers are basically helping with all that. They're pilf pilfering brick. You're just bolting it. Okay. Chase mechanic. Is it athletics? Yeah. Do do, 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 do. <laughs> you might be good at this, right? Oh, better than Ainsley. This is probably his one thing. <laughs> his dump staff. <laughs> this isn't uh, my dog patting pants. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for a chase? Mm -hmm. 
You get challenge level one. It's hard to run in a gird. <laughs> He's wearing a dressing robe. Might just. It's, there's a girdle underneath it for sure. Oh, that's what I want Oof, to see. Okay. Yes. Absolutely bolted. You are now within this round, able to flank him. I would like to spear tackle him. Okay. Cool. We'll come back to that. Does he have his dog with him? Or is uh, the dog maybe a myth? There was no dog. Okay. The dog was never there. Um, well, so... It, so sly. So, I run over to Hawk and Mish. Hawk and Mish, yeah. And I... Yeah, they, now they're sort of like battle ready and starting to... I look at them with with like hands out like that and, and I say, um, it'd be best if you find safety and get out of this building. But... If you seek a friend, Brick and myself will find you. Be safe. Where do we go? Who? Uh, he, you can, he catches himself. He was going to say, like, who is our master? But he actually shakes it off. He's like, where will we find you? I say, well, at his response, I say, actually, if you help me leave... And take him, and I point at Harold, with us. You can come with me. But that's a request, not an order. Please, help me. The help it shall be. And they charge off. Uh, Hox goes off to grab Harold, Harold and unskewer him. His screeching, <laughs> his, his leg disjoints. Like it's just like held on by pieces of flesh. And he just sort of yanks it off and throws it off and grabs it. Squeezes his leg shut to stop him bleeding out. I will take your suggestions as to where to go. Right. And I'm going to go with them and escape. Okay. Well, I'm assuming escape is past Ainsley and Brick though, right? Did you say that was the way to go? Um, you don't know. Okay. All well, you know is the stairs you came up are non-existent. Okay, well then I'm going to go towards the only exit I can see, which is... There's two exits at the back and then there's the secret. There's a door at the back in the center of the room and one to the right near the coldish pick. Am I not going to get the coldish pick? It's too high, isn't it? Do you want to roll a check? Do you have any magic? I have one dice. Do you want to roll one dice? Okay. <clears throat> I fail. Okay. Do you have any destiny? No. That's the end of my magic. <laughs> uh -huh. I expend the last of it in a final check. I have two. Of five. whatever I was doing. I saw two and five magic. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. Burn it. Mm. Crossbow it down. It is magically held there by a the same sort of magic that you have learned to do. There was a telekinesis spell that was used to suspend it that has been held there stationary and it is holding it there. That coldish pick. You couldn't even lift it, could you? No. Well, well you not, know, you, not easily. It would be a grip said. check or something. Yeah. It would be a grip check to hold or use. It's, uh, aside from the Colidetras, got to be the most, oh, I mean, I'd say uh, it's, it's pretty close. It's about as valuable. I toss you the crossbow as it's I'm running with the kids. I don't know. I'm a fucking destiny dice. 15. You crawl within your... Oh, do you know what? You can stretch yourself if you want to. You, I'm going to say, injury. based on that destiny dice, you <laughs> know he's giving us stuff. <laughs> how to... You know how it would work. You sort of find the trigger, but you're going to have to push by one point. Okay. You know what? So there were two called. One of them's run off to get Harold. I mm -hmm. say, um, I guess maybe two points, based on the telekinesis spell that would actually have to hold it. Ah, uh, then I'm I'm what not going to massively massacre myself yeah. to do it. It's just it's not <laughs> worth an object. Okay, all right, it's not worth an object. It could fall down with the place, and then it's on the ground, and then yeah. you could just go. Pick yeah, it up no, later. I don't think I can risk. Like, you know what's there? Fucking myself up. Yeah. Although, how much would Brick like it? I love my own weapon. Okay. We leave it. Forget it, Delvin. We can come back <laughs> for it later. We leave it. I just love the idea of the whole tower falling and down, it's but it's telekinetically held like 10 floors up. Just, yeah. <laughs> just no. forever, just floating under the sky. I'm going to run with run towards Ainsley and Brick with my... In the corridor? Toward, that's the direction I'd He's like to head. He's in the corridor. You're running behind them in the corridor? Because I'm assuming he was heading to safety. My assumption is Ainsley's heading to safety. Okay. We don't really know the way out. It's okay. worth a shot. It's Great. as good as any other bet. 
all right, what are you, where are you searching? Uh, make- do you know what? Since you're spending your turn sort of exploring to find a way out, I'm going to say you find through the back right door um, a room, like a meeting room, and then there is a not super well-locked uh, door that looks like there's a staircase behind it heading down. Then the other door, the single door at the back of the room, uh, shortly behind it is a staircase heading up. Oh, uh, can I make like a perception check to see what would be down or up? Oh, okay. Uh, you know that the room that was mainly used by Ainsley was the back door that headed up. Let's use that one then. You don't have to. I wasn't giving you a hint. I was just letting you know that that's probably like more of a. The building is collapsing. Yeah. You want to, sorry, climb up to the Uh, up. Down. Wait, so you said there's a door at the one that's down that doesn't look too heavily locked. Yeah. Yeah, let's go down. Okay. Yeah. And I kind of whistle over to the Phelan Claw. Mish and says, like, yeah. say no more. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, she hey, pushes buddy. it aside and just, just like smashes the door and it flails open. And there's a stone staircase. And uh, Mikey uh, looks. Has he got his mouth back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That, that's all. <laughs> oh, sorry, buddy. With all the calamity, it's sort of. Yes. Um, and it, yeah, he, he probably got that through the midst of all of this sort of happening when, by the time Ainsley's like shooting the big ballista thing. Mm-hmm. So he's, uh, he's like, oh, we don't, don't like it down there. That's where he kept us far down. It's all right. Uh, I mean, down is down, isn't it? Fuck it, let's go. Okay. <laughs> I know where I'm going, kids. <laughs> okay. We start heading down the stairs. Then well, we're, I'm heading towards we're you. We're back in the hallway and uh, <laughs> you flank him. Just look, make the roll. Just make it. What do I even roll? Unarmed combat. Uh, he is not, because he declared first, he's just pelting it and he's not like... So I get, you get a roll. Plus two or something? You just get, he gets, and he's not able to roll. Oh, okay. He's just running. He spent every piece of energy he had on like sweatily trying to run away. No, I had two. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Picture level two. Dalvin, do you want to assist? Well, well, no, I'm just sorry. Um, You, so you had flanking though. No, I didn't. Did I? Yeah, you have flanking. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, well, I mean, he's on his... Okay, so he's just not... Def- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, just okay, an so undefended role. What's yeah. the... What's the... What's the... I'm going to just freely assume at least here I'm not close enough to roll. But you said you're spear tackling him. Yeah. So... Yeah. Well, that's your role for the spear tackle. Yeah. Can you suggest need to make a three? You can. I don't know if that... And that would be a trip. All right. Done. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Come on, on Bricky boy. The last Done. time, Do it. the last yeah. episode, old destiny, and he's Yay. like writhing and trying to get away. I want you to tell me. I want to hear what you do, Brick. How do you slam him into the ground? <laughs> you I'm, I'm going to say just from the sheer amount of height that I have on top of him, because like he's a large man, but he's not a large man. Mm. I am both. Um, so from the sheer height I get him, I'm going to hit him at about shoulder height, causing him to face plant and just like gently skid his face across the ground as I'm like, Oof. as I land Take a on layer top off. of him. He loves yeah. that face. And he's too. like gasping and panicking. Um, Do you take the scepter with you, by the way? Yeah, I've got the scepter. Got oh, it, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just checking, just checking. Hmm. Okay, net. It can oh, only hold then one. Then Delvin. So are you just spend your turn approaching them. Well, I charge up now if it's the next turn to yeah, catch up. So it'll take the turn yep. to catch up. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Ainsley is in his desperate final stage. Everything he's seen around him has collapsed. Okay. He declares first. There's something wrong with you. 
There's something wrong with all of you that you don't know your place. And he screams as he holds his He's arms up down. to you too. Pardon? He, oh. he, he is face down. I'm on his back. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Correct. Well, even so, he is going to use his magic. Okay. So I go first. Uh, he declares first. It all, he declared it's all simultaneous. So he still gets his full move, but you can declare based knowing what he's doing. Yep. I would like to... I would like to grab the back of his head, his hair, and smash his face into the ground as hard as I can. Okay. I hope you're not planning on killing him. No, I don't want to do that. What are you so doing? So not as hard as... No, well, as, as am I, as I in range to? Do you I, can do. Do I feel like I'm getting targeted it. with this magic, or is it hitting brick? You, oh, I'll say it's brick. It's the only thing he can target right now. To be honest, you should put your mask on. Be cool. <laughs> be the <Batman. laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm behind them. Mm-hmm. How so fucked up do I want to be? It's up to you. What does Delvin want to do? Oh, God, I almost wretched when I just thought of what I wanted to do. <laughs> oh, not that, not that fucked up. Um, <laughs> Holy. I'm glad that I'm not here for this encounter. I decided to run. I, so he's completely prone with brick on top of him. Delvin just says very loudly, no more running, Ainsley. And then just sticks his dagger through his Achilles tendon and just rips it up. Uh. Holy uh. shit. <laughs> oh. Okay. So this all would happen at once. So he's yep. still going to get his spell. Yeah. He, and, and you're going to sense, because it's such loose magic mm-hmm. and it's such a big motion. Uh, he's sloppy though. Is it level four that he was throwing out shit. there and he lost three, three all at once? But Ouch. hey, look, he's about to die. So that is... No, he's um, not. I mean, sorry, what? <laughs> okay. Anyway, three, a minus three to all of your reflex and in- intelligence to brick. And combat. And combat. That's fine. I'm not cool. doing a combat check. I'm doing a strength check. To smash his head against the thing. It's a grip uh, check. Surely it's a grip check. It's an unarmed combat yeah. move. So unarmed combat. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> and what is it? Minus three. Minus three. Fucking hell. Use your destiny. I don't have any. I used it. Oh. Oh well. Yeah, that was worth it. <sighs> okay. So I'm still sitting you would have been primed to do it. Yeah, yeah, still, yeah. And he used his full turn and you feel like, whoa. You know, like when you get that weird rush when like mm. every, the whole of the blood from your body drains from your head and you're just like an inch away from throwing up. It's like that sensation of like you are out of control of your faculties and you feel like this, this sap, like your sharpness entirely. And then his <laughs> shed and he's torn out. <laughs> okay, next round. <laughs> All right. Destiny roll for the building. Okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, That's a three. Okay. I'm going to send this in one of two directions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything under 10, it's heading in the Catalina group direction. All the innocent people. Yeah. yeah Anything yeah. over is going in the other direction. Okay, good. 17. In, in I'm the, okay with that. Yeah, it's in the bad guy's direction. Yep. Okay. On his head. <laughs> no, we're the bad guys too. A huge chunk of the building, including the hallway that you guys are in, just drops like by like a foot and starts creaking and starts drifting. So next round. So how fucked are your faculties? Combat wise, not great, but I'm, I'm going to do strength wise. Physically, you can do strength stuff, yeah. yeah. Can I tell, that he, I can tell you, I knew he cast yeah. a spell, he's mentally fackled. And I, and I, you know, in really clear and concise way, I'm just like, Brick, carry him. And then like, hmm. to the, like, we'll deal with this. 
And then I'm like gesturing and pulling towards the safety of the building. Make a grip check. Can I please rip off my shackle and attach it to his throat? (gasps) Oh! That's a free action. So you may do that. You just pull it off and latch it around his neck. It's big. It would just fall off of his head. Uh, Waist. I'll put it around yeah. his body if it's, I need it, to. It'll have. Ooh, he's big boy. His leg. Uh, leg. leg. Uh, anyway. <laughs> you could go between his neck and under his arm. Done. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, it will not be comfortable. Good. You force it. It takes some extra yanking, and you hear a crack, and you like tie the shackle up. Yeah. Run time. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna drag him by the chain. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, grip. Check. Challenge level. Oh, he's a big boy. Let me look at my table. That is a uh, difficult task. Challenge level four. Oh, fuck. Now I'm worried I won't make it. Nah, you made it. That was three. Three. Oh, is it? Yeah. Do you have destiny left? No. What? I don't care if he stumbles. Uh, Yeah, it's slow. (laughs) I'll I'll fail forward here. It's not graceful and... Keep up or you'll die. Yeah, he's, he's how did his Achilles tendon he's just torn dragged. out? He's like squirming on the ground and screaming. He's not in control. One of them works. Yeah, one does work. I only did one. Oh, pure huh? man. Oh, you can assist. Oh, yeah. yeah. How what, what? Grip, grip check. It's basically it's trying to fix the one. So I'll say challenge of one. Anything better than a one will help him. It's just like helping pull a chain. So he's doing most of the work. You can't even can't do it. I a one, grip. I have one dice. I'm injured by one. Challenge oh, my one. mental faculties are reduced by one. Physical. I have two dice. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> yeah, nah, you're like, oh, fuck you're it. pretty woozy. I'm actually oh, two yeah. ones. No, I want, I want to take, so you can't, you guys kind of push me into doing that. Delvin isn't helping. Yeah. Delvin is walking at the pace that Ainsley is being dragged like, but behind him, while you drag him along, Ainsley, uh, and Delvin's he's like just turning, walking, pulls and I'm just like... watching and walking slowly as he's going. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next round now. I'm going to destiny roll to see, because I'll say you'll get to the crack of where this has torn, and you have to sort of climb over. Yep. Uh, this is just to sort of see. It's just a 13. Okay, yeah, cool. Oh, that was, so it you're was climbing, like one. You're thing. climbing over the precipice not long after you get over it. Like, you know, five seconds later, the whole chunk of that building starts just and falls and starts tipping over. Oh, fuck, that was terrifying. It was on one and then it yeah. was 13. So you're walking forwards. Ainsley holds up his hand, sweaty towards Delvin as he's like being dragged. His only free arm is like mm-hmm. holding up. And I pathetically I, using the last of what he has. I, I tap my head and I'm like, oh, but you're almost spent. I can feel it. Okay, what do you do, Brick? You reach, I'm going to say this says you reach a staircase, a small staircase, a uh, spiral staircase that goes up. Is he wearing my ring? Yes. All right, as my action, as my declaration, I'm going to take my ring back. There you go. Okay. That'll be the first of many things. Right, you reach the staircase. Thing. So what's your action? I'll pick him up. Okay. Oh, look, I'll just include it. Let's move forward at this point. Cool. Yeah. You pick him up. Uh, as your action... I mean... He can cast, but I'm still going to take the thing off. Yeah, he still gets his thing. Hey, he keeps his mana too. You know what? What? Sheer force of fuckery will. I'm going to risk injuring myself to stop him. You're going to counter it? Challenge of one just to stop him. That's what I do. Or his hand. Well, he still casts it. That's the thing. And the thing is, this might be his magic, not the ring anyway. Yeah. Mm. So I'm just going to... In a brand. Challenge of a one. Yeah. Hey, yes. Success. Well done. And you hold it up and you feel this pulse of like, he's like, it's like he's drowning and he's latching onto your soul and your energy and your faculties and clawing at it. And you just push it back and it just isn't reaching you. And then I reach out and just pull the ring off his weak little fingers. Don't. Take that from me! I always get what I want! Smack his head against the wall as he's saying that. <laughs> yes, you can. Yeah. All right. Just, just I'll give you that one for free. <laughs> yep. Shut up. All right. You climb the stairs. 
slide in front of him, slide the ring onto my finger. Okay. And just like Ooh. while we walk. All right. You climb the spiral staircase. It just goes up one flight and you end up in his bedroom. Mm-hmm. What would clearly be Ansley's bedroom. Uh, another huge variety of fancy things. There's a couple of uh, um, condemned, <laughs> uh, what do you call them? Watchers who are in there sort of been pilfering, throwing things yep. into bags and look across at you as you sort of emerge from behind a bookcase. Mm. Um, there is a an unconscious failing man on the bed. It's just oh. worth pointing that out. I, I motion to the guys as I come in and I'm like, it's time to go. And and then I grin as I point at Ainsley, who's all fucked up. You back the right horse. Now, if you can take that gentleman with us, I'll be grateful. Okay. I am going to make a roll mm-hmm. regarding tokens. Yep. 17. Ooh. I'm going to say Peter walks up to you, licks his teeth. He says... I like to think I proved myself as quite useful, he says as he holds out five tokens. This is everything we found. Is he amongst them? He looks at you like and down at the tokens and he gives this expression that says yes, his is there. I reach for four and take them and leave one in his hand, but his one in his hand. And I say, you proved yourself to be very distinguished and effective and I hope... You enjoy your freedom, but I also hope we can start a long and fruitful relationship working together. Well, as far as as far as first impressions go, this is pretty fucking hard to top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, lads! And he runs out, and they're like it's like time to go because the building is yeah, falling yeah, apart. Yeah, we gotta go. And they uh, there's another staircase mm-hmm. that they head down, which seems to go to that other center door. I have five watcher tokens beyond mine. Mm-hmm. Woo! Season two. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm not enjoying they take this the, at all. The guy with them as well. It's a, wh- wh- I, I asked them to take Darius with us. Okay, with them. I said I did say. Oh well, I get the watch tokens. I'm yep. like, take him downstairs. He's valuable too. Yeah. Okay, they pick him up. I am going to. This is a destiny roll for people who were pilfering. Mm-hmm. The building is collapsing. Yep. So how many... What, this is like basically a percentage. How okay. many of them survive? Ooh. It's not great. <clears throat> uh, let me say three of them. Survive. Up, uh, three of them die. Okay. So there's four. There's four total. Three left. Or four total. Oh, yeah, one got blasted. One got killed. Oh, yeah. One got blasted. So there's six. So, so three die. So three are Half dead. Half get out. Yep. It's three living watchers. Mm-hmm. Um. And, yeah, it's basically like as they're grabbing things off of the wall, like just, you know, something from above just like clocks them on the head and they fall is, down. Is the, the dude, is, is Peter one of the ones who lived or died? He lived, yeah. yeah. It, okay. The ones in the room that you found, they, they had lived. Okay, there was okay. more people in the hall yep. than people who were gathering different awesome. stuff. Okay, so you're running out. What's next? Getting out of there. And then okay. we'll deal with Ainsley when we're Sprint safe. out and you're going down the staircase. Meanwhile, uh, Catalina and the gang have Yo. been descending down the stairs and there comes a point where you're pretty confident you reach ground level and the stairs continue, but there is a, a way to get out. There is a door. Great. But Mikey sort of indicates, I'm like, that's where he... Uh, he shudders. That's where he keeps us. Oh, um, uh, I kind of, like... I, I put my hand over his eyes... <laughs> Uh, Actually, I pick him up. I, it helped. He's a teenager. He's 15. Yeah, he's like 15, uh, 16. I tell him, I'm going to get him to get on my back instead. Um, <laughs> he's probably as tall as he is. You want to offer this? He probably would. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's not I'm a tiny think, child. I know. I'm he's think. helping carry Medela. Okay. And you have Still. two Phelan Cool people okay, with you. I ask one of the Phelan Cool, I'm like, uh, do you mind uh, carrying him? He's a bit weak <laughs> at the moment. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, and they help carry the Fantastic. Kids. In fact, they end up carrying one each. It only oh, makes sense. And a Harold. And a Harold. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. They, you know. just, just close yeah. your eyes, buddy. It'll, it'll be fine. All right, yeah, we can you clamber out and you sort of end up in the foyer bit, but like it's empty and there's some rubble all around the place and you sort of see a corner of the distant building sort of collapse and there is a large open space where there once was a front entrance 
open out to the street. There are a lot of people running around and now that you're sort of down and you can sort of at the level of the street, you hear a lot of screaming and shrieking. Is it just this building that's collapsing or is it the whole town is, like the buildings next to it are also filling the damage? Um, you don't know yet. You're inside the building. Okay, we'll just... Run out. Yep, yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay, run out. Meanwhile, uh, the other gang are at the top of the stairs. I'm going to have to roll Destiny because... Yep. Yep, now this is about how you guys get out. 15. Okay. There have been far too many. I'm getting really <sighs> worried. <laughs> Holding together by a thread. I'm you guys, you guys are, I'm going to do, look, let's, this is the chance we get to do this. As you're like running down, like four meters behind you, there's like a collapse and you're running down and another five meters behind you again, like. So an Indiana so Jones. Yeah, totally. Over. Like the yeah. floor is falling away <laughs> yeah, as you're nice. running down. You're like sprinting. Like, you know, you drop like this really valuable fail and gold chain at one point, you like run back to grab it and the bricks sort of fall away from yeah. where you go from. You're running out and you like skid out. And as you run out with three watchers holding uh, Dariot and Brick and Delvin <laughs> holding Ainsley. What do you do? You reach into the Get foyer. to safety. We need to get out of crumb crumbling yeah. ru rubble beyond okay. anything else. Ainsley run is <clears throat> basically magically spent. He's can't run. He's got his Achilles cut and he's weak. He's on a leash. <laughs> and the other guy's unconscious with his leg off. Like, we have time. If mm -hmm. ever we have time. And the chaos of the city is going to mean that no one's going to care about people carrying injured people. There's going to be injured people everywhere. We just need to get somewhere safe. Okay. It doesn't take you long because you basically got to get to the street. You have to run out quite a fair bit because you can see where some of the towers have fallen and they've sort of spread and some people have been injured. There are people moaning and crying and wailing. But a lot of people are just horrified and shrieking. And as you run out... You, the earthquake has sort of subsided. It um, it has come back in waves, but by the time you run out, you see what a lot of these people are reacting to. Off in the distance, the coldish crown has erupted, and there is a huge cloud of ash and smoke and fire that has erupted from it. But aside from that, in the direction of the capital. There is a huge pillar of fire, absolutely massive and reaching up into the clouds, even higher than the spire itself, with a pulse of fire emanating from where it's connecting with the clouds. Fire and flame from both directions, taking up the sky, heating up the sky and the clouds. Does it look like the fire is coming from Iron Spire or be it like burning Iron Spire? Looks like it's coming from. Like looks like it's erupting out of. Magical colours like the purple fire the cat did. Yeah. It's got that magenta hue to it. So does the volcano. And the moon in the sky is a dark orange and slowly drifting towards a red as the smoke that fills was in the, the prophecy. air. People are Watch screaming. Out. There are a few people. There are some people wearing like very pointy sort of like hat things that are like... And the, and the fury of the King of Flames will drown and, and fall upon all of you. You're all, you know, repent, basically. You know, <laughs> that's what he's doing. Um, okay. I think it's at this point we can skip to the future a little bit. I think we can let the night pass. You run to safety. We need to collect What is Russell? the plan? Russell, we need to contact children. Of, we, there's a few people we need to make sure are safe. Your dad. Elijah. Elijah. Mm. Okay. Now, a lot of that we'll sort of have to brush over. Mm -hmm. um, I think the way to do this will be dot pointed mm -hmm. because Cat's dad is going to be safe. Yeah. Um, the children of Ahmad, Sartre is waiting at the, the inn. And she does. Uh, she. Oh wait. What are you doing with Ainsley and Dariot? I or do you use Russell to okay, sort of. The broad context is: I want to get all our assets somewhere safe, so we can deal with them with due course. Okay. Like, there's no rash. So with all this kerfuffling, or... yeah. Okay. With with everything happening, I'm going to say. 
basically all your resources pulling together all your connections at the end of the day. Even the two at about four call. in the morning, you know, like four five hours have passed from all this calamity happening. Everyone's sort of split and like, okay, we're doing this, this, and this, and this, and we end up in a room that is uh, a deeper cell of one of the um, Iron Guard holdings. Mm-hmm. At which point they've they've all been pretty abandoned. They're all out on the street anyway, so it's it's pretty quiet. Russell secured a room. The door is bolted and inside the room is the entire party that was at Ainsley's house that is alive. So watches, the failing call. Everyone. Okay, cool. And Satra mm-hmm. and Russell. And Eladra. Eladra? And Eladra. Uh, actually, no. She'd stay at the end unless you wanted her to come. It's up to you. Let's spare her the misery for a Well, she can choose what she wants to do. Yeah, yeah it's her choice. Yeah. All right. So... We're all collected. Is there multiple like room areas or whatever? I think it's one dark stone room with candles lighting the walls. I'm gonna get everyone to. I'm gonna get Brick to make a perception check. I'm gonna. Okay, this is an important one for Medela because she pushed herself to save you. Yeah. So. I'm going to say before I roll the dice what counts for what. She pushed herself in a big way. I have to state that. Anything below a 7 is not good at all. It's very, very bad. Anything below a 17, between 17 and 7, bad. Not good, but not tragic. 18, 19, 20, you're okay. Oh, I feel bad juju right now. <laughs> I feel good juju because it's going to be an 18. Oh, my God, you caught it. What the fuck? Uh, I, it's about time I told you guys <laughs> my magic power, uh, which is uh, actually the same one that the, 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 okay. the masked woman had. Why are you using that now? On the last episode. Because dramatic tension. But I don't want Medela to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? If there was ever a way to see a finale off. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd rig the dice for a second. You're about to be like, oh, oh I planted that there a few days ago. No, I just... Space and time. <laughs> Fortune magic. She flutters her eyes. And slowly comes to. She is very dreary. She's been pushed beyond the limits of what is normal and pushed herself further than even Delvin did when you were in the capital. Something stopped it turning worse. She's probably going to collapse in exhaustion again anytime soon. But she looks up at Brick and, like, coming to, says... You came back for me. I knew you would come back for me. It was never in question, little one, but hush, rest. I can rest now that I have done what I could to protect you. I love you, Brick. And she wraps her arms around you and almost immediately drifts to sleep. Just like Gently, like, pat her on the head. Affection's weird. Okay. So Brick is holding a sleeping Medela and the room gathers together around a large table. Well, this has been an eventful evening, to say the least. Where do we go from here? Everything, everything will change. We have a rare opportunity... Fortune has favoured us today. But to take advantage of that will extract a heavy cost. And I, I think should this point out, kind of I, I so I should point out there is a fluttering purple butterfly that has not left Catalina. Oh, I thought it would disappear. No, it's stayed with you. Oh. 
Okay. You have fairy magic now. That's fucking awesome. I I like try to not like catch it, but like try to see. If it's it's um. Nice. It's kind of like a. It. You can. Can everyone see it? Yeah. Okay. And you can communicate with it, not in words, not verbally, but like you can feel that you, if you need it on your shoulder or want it to dwell within you or hide, you could ask it to and it would. Or if you wanted it to fly free and flutter around. But it's expressive. It's like reacts a little bit sometimes to people, you know. It's a new friend that you've never kn- known I you always had. really look forward to getting the deep opportunity to explore this butterfly in yeah, season me too. two in six months. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> Satra, I have to ask another character question. That mace, the scepter, mm-hmm. transfers power. Mm-hmm. It requires magic to pull the power out. Mm-hmm. A significant amount of magic. Mm-hmm. Um, and we promised it to. Okay, so our compact is sealed. Mm-hmm. My, ba- I'm just gonna tell you, out of character. My thinking is Delvin wants to take magic from one of these NPCs or attempt to, which I can't do until I rest, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure if that is easier to do by taking it from the scepter, like sucking it up and then killing. The answer is Ainsley. Ainsley's the easiest to take it from. Oh, or, uh, or Harold. The, or well. Harold. I, they would be as easy as you. Uh, the scepter is its own mechanism that you don't quite understand, and it's okay. more powerful than you that, can control. That just works. Then, then, yeah. I'm, then I say to Satra, "This is yours, and it has what you bargained for." You are a man of your word, but they, they are mine. I've got to brush up on how to use this power, the power of Amar. After all, well. There are many things I'm sure we could teach each other. Thank you for acquiring this, and not only for helping us in this way, but for not working against our cause or caving to the bullying of such filth. She sort of eyes over it, an unconscious, bloodied Ainsley. We can change the world, we in this small room. We little people. And and I look at Russell when I say this more than anyone. And I think that world will need <laughs> us more than ever in the coming days. So, where to from here? I can't imagine... I uh, can't imagine I would uh, be all that youthful in the guard at this point in time. I think you will be more useful than you might expect, for we must prepare for war. I don't even know what that was coming from the capital, but it can't be good, and it's got the King of Flames written all over it. I'm not as worried about the capital as I am about the crown. The cold will not be able to reside there. They will leave, and they will go to one of two places. You're right. Things are going to get dark very soon. Well, if you'll forgive my suggestion, there are two places further and safer. The Nysia, the Barrows. And I'd say I've got a vested interest in Starting to set some pieces up there. We're going to need a base of operations in neutral ground with which to act. I've got some new inductees, and I kind of gesture towards the watchers, um, with very bright futures. Looking at all the failing golden stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're like pockets are just yeah. bulging, and they're just like, yep, what next, boss? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and we've got prisoners to deal with as well. 
well, it sounds like you have a lot of plans, and I certainly think there are many ways that owls could cross paths and be of help to each other. I must guess, get this back to the mother, but we can provide paths through to Thanissia to where answers lie and where training lies, if necessary. If this is a battle of resources, of magic, well, we just turned the tide, I believe. So if you do what you need in the barrows, we can consolidate our work in Tunisia and find our way to work together. You know how to reach Melba. Aye. This can be one of our ways to make sure we can meet where we need to. You look like you're squirming with something to say, oh, young really, Delvin. I got really excited <laughs> just at the thought of season two being like Barrows, then Thanissia, mm. and then a potential season three being like uh, the Phelan Lands and the Coolish Crown. As like, because we did Great Owl first, it just felt very complete. And I just was like, oh, world building nerdiness. Well, yes. I turned to the Phelan call and Brick and I say, if there's anyone in the world who can understand what you're going through right now, it's Brick. Having just been through it himself, I invite you to stay with us for as long as you want to. You say this to the other... The two oh, fan call. <clears throat> we do not know where to go. While I am inclined to take you up on your offer, you notice that they've been like shyly like holding mm. hands <laughs> like out of sight of people perhaps after some time we could meet in the future in these barrels of yours but I would like uh, Mish speaks up we would like to be away together for some time first I, at that, I, I say, perhaps journey with us north to the Barrows and then take your time there. Great Ale, Great Ale's a hostile place to fail and call, and the Barrows will see you a little bit kinder. So speak wisdom, little man. Tell me, what is it about you, strange people, that is so different from everyone else who expects us to be in this place of servitude both in Felmore and even these lands why you why and he looks at Brick why you because a little girl treated me like an equal Can we tell you a story? Please do. I tell them the story of eyes of our journey. That'll be our journey north. We'll tell them about my day there and stuff. Beautiful. I think that's a good place to... Unless anyone else had... All these people time. are going to be like, but I want to know what you did <laughs> at Ainsley! <laughs> I think we can save what we did at Ainsley to the in-between break. That could be a really some really cool dramatic scenes that we do in between. Do you know what could be interesting? I'm just going to put this out there. We did a beach episode for Reboot. I think that's a little out of Iron Spy character. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what if we do a journey north? Just one session, two hours on the journey north to the Barrows. It's like... To come um, in like halfway through reboot or something. Well, I was actually thinking uh, we have a mid-season thing that we have planned. Yep. Just sort of in there just to yeah, wrap yeah. it up and then before we start reboot again. Love just it. Just one final way to sort of... And we can think about it. It gives us a chance to... And it gives... it gives. Uh, we'll have done our Q&A and uh, they'll have been a little bit more like... It, it'll have settled a little bit. It just gives it one little last chance for everyone to be their characters and say their goodbyes as they head north. And, and it's like the official, like, welcoming of the passage of time before season two begins. That could be really fun. Aye. It's the Pope, not the prologue, what's the? Epilogue. Epilogue. It's the epilogue to season one of Vine's Bar. 
But that is the end of Yay. season one of Iron's Fire. And it's a thing. It's a real Holy thing. I know, right? Yay. The well craziest done. thing is, like, when it all starts, like, at the beginning, and I was so excited, but I wasn't, like, yeah, I was excited because, like, I, you know, wrote a world and stuff. But I was so excited because I wrote a, made a sandbox. And this is the magic. When you get a group of players together and you get to go on, and, go on in a journey you all figure out together. I had stuff this chapter that I was certain was going to happen. It was going to suck. And you guys fucking wormed your way out of it so <laughs> brilliantly. And I love that. And I knew I had to make it like that because I knew you would surpass all my expectations. It also means that if the roles suck, they suck. But <laughs> but everything everything was earned, and oh, you know, that was so the cool. luck of my whole campaign turned yeah. back around for yeah. Delvin tonight. Yeah. I rolled one. hot, yeah, all night. Yeah, I will cool. say though as well, I've never experienced um, this type of role play where the relationship between you and Dave like that was totally unexpected for me. Yeah. I think probably Rob feels the same way too. Like we did not expect that, and that was just so cool. Oh, you Thank mean the you sparrow did. thing? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Right. That was so cool for both of you to have done that. So, yeah, yeah thank you. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, secret conspiring villain for season two of Reboot. His name is Rob. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we're going to have to leave it uh, there, but we'll wrap up just the reminder that if you want to check out the poster or the merch, that's a huge support. Send in your questions for the Q&A, which will be here next week. And then we're on a, a break from Iron Spy and then we're amping up for a reboot. And we have a mid-season break thing that we're going to do. Which and that's so exciting, but I can't even think about yeah, that now. I can't wait to wear the Sparrow. What is the fucking coolest thing? We just finished up another first season. We're just about to do a mid-season thing. That's super fucking exciting. And we're about to start season two, our first ever Yay. season two. Like this is a victory on every level. Of everything? And, uh, yeah. Uh, ever? Yeah. 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 I'm just like, I'm so proud of all of us. Thank you, everyone at the table. Like, thank you guys for being on this journey. Thank both you. through it. Like, thank and you. Rob and I were listening to Reboot Season 1 today, and we're like, man, we've come a long way. Yeah. And that was a long way from before that. Yeah. Like, yeah. every next step is just so cool, and I'm just so grateful to be doing this for you guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And you watching and listening. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Is it one us. more, pe some people, special people sentiment. we have to thank as well? Yeah, we've got some slow comers, but when we they do, do arrive, they get hit fast. They do. So <laughs> we're going to amp up, we're going to be ready. All right. Uh, we're also, uh, I think the Q&A next week will be in lieu of <laughs> the hangout tonight because it's a, it's nearly 1am. This friend, this friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> going for five hours. Yeah, gee. Um, new merch. New merch is coming. It's a very, very, very cool new merch and poster for the season. There's... Twitch chat. Yeah, also, also, also coming through very right, special. Thanks for our supporters. That was an amazing story, Vine oh. Spy. I can't wait for season two. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, and dark everyone dark. else. Professor X. Tickle Duck. Inferno Shadows. AJ Macy. Aussie Oh, thank you. It's the T small text. Sorry, Aussie Artie Buddy. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you, everyone, for an amazing season one of Vine Spy. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Yay. Yay. See you later. See you, everyone.